Who's going to intro this card? You. Why do I? Oh, fuck, I don't know. If, bro, I don't know if I got the energy, man. Yeah, you do. Just close your eyes and do it. Good afternoon, morning, evening, or night, ladies. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you actually doing? There's a spot. <laughs> okay, picking, we'll I'm picking the that. leg spot. Do you, do you never get spots on your low lows? Yeah, now and again. See, this is prime cast talk, but uh, do the intro. <laughs> okay, I'm coming over here. Why? Why do I have to be like the piggy in the middle? <laughs> yeah, the, the piggy in the middle. <laughs> That's the name of the cast. Piggy in the middle. Good afternoon, morning, evening, or night, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, we are back! <laughs> 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 down as well. What was it? It was Ruby D. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> we are here in video. The Charcast has returned, and today I'm joined by Alex Hi. and uh, Jamie. What's up? And this is Charcast episode two two seven. <laughs> Yeah, right? Or was it 2 to 8? <laughs> no way. Did we actually forget to change the number? It's 2 to 8. No, we, it is 2 to 8. We didn't change it. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> We've been gone a long time, okay? This is yeah, why but, this happened. As you can see, we're rusty. We are rusty. Uh, it feels extremely weird just doing what, it. Interacting in... with other humans. Yeah, just being normal. You know, having just... My face, actually, on a video, not like this, you know, Discord mm. game type thing. So, how are we all doing, boys? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. It's been a long fucking time. It's mm -hmm. been really long. Almost as long as the uh, the Jar Media Patreon, which uh, we should shout out before we get any deeper. Head over to the Patreon and give us your love and support so that we can keep funding the show and improving because as you can see this is our new setup what this is our new setup bro piggy in the middle P this is the piggy in the middle podcast where we discuss the <laughs> most intense topics we felt like we needed to like rebrand or something yeah you know after this covid and how intense it's been you know everyone's had massive life-changing events we thought we'd uh relaunch the podcast as a new entity that strives for Excellence and normality. <laughs> <laughs> and piggies in the middle. We are the piggies in the middle. Piggy in the middle can die. I'm fine with piggy in the middle dying. <laughs> that didn't last very long. <laughs> piggy in the middle is dead. We're back, baby. Oh, fuck piggy in the middle. Yeah. I'll piggy be... in the middle's gone. <laughs> it's jar, baby. <laughs> We're okay, back. It's back, back to jar. Okay, <laughs> back to jar. Uh, welcome to jar. Um, let's address some. Topics and questions and stuff from the last episode. Then we've never done a live action housekeeping. Fuck. I don't think. Um, That's fucking crazy. Man. You sure about that? Maybe. Well, I'll, I lie because we did the comment corners originally, way back in the old days. But when when did you when did we start the comment barrel crucible? I thought that was a corn thing, but comment barrel and comment crucible were <laughs> corn things for sure. What's it now, now that we're in the live realm? Um... The pigs. Piggy in the middle? Yeah, piggy in the middle. Hello, oh, welcome to the piggy in the middle section. Where yeah, we... the commenter is like the the little piggy in the middle. And their like. comments being bounced off us as we yeah, torment them. as we surround the piggy. Yeah. Kobe Langston's gonna start us off. Alex calling out Troy Baker for playing Asian characters is the most egregious hypocrisy. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, I thought the same thing, um, <coughs> as I was saying it, but, you know. Wasn't it me that said it? Did you? Yeah. What about old Nick? No, about um, Troy Baker playing an Asian character. No, because I brought up Mass Effect 3 in that Asian yeah. character he plays. And this is, of course, referencing Hunt Down the Freeman, where I played an Asian character. What, what sort of research did you do into... None. None. Did you actually have a choice in the character you're being? No, I, <laughs> no, I explain it. I think in my video, like the, the 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 character model was already rendered, so I guess they didn't want to do anything again because it's like takes time and is t hard. So they already had the model, 
So the character wasn't written for you? No, they just had like a random character and they're like, you can be the Asian guy. <laughs> God. You looked you looked like a you looked Asian when you were a kid. When you were like four. Yeah. No, I thought so. the same in those pictures, but I don't believe that for a second. It's true. I don't. We had a couple of questions relating to Mass Effect. Of course it's all the rage at the moment, the legendary mm-hmm. edition is out. I've been playing it a lot. Power Couch says, I appreciate James geeking out about Ilos Vigil, the Reaper level and the soundtrack. Definitely one of my fondest memories in gaming yeah when we i I played parts of mass effect one and i was massively because we last talked about it before i'd actually played it Mm -hmm. i was massively shocked by the improvements they made to mass effect oh we're talking about yeah yeah you tried legendary edition mass effect one yeah it's it's a like if there's any time to jump onto mass effect it is now Mm -hmm. that that first game is so playable now like i'm probably going to be jumping on it and buying it myself because I just I'm on a Mass Effect craze. It's been on my mind since actually playing Mass Effect One again. Yeah, and it must have also agreed with that boy Miguel, who said the Mass Effect talk honestly convinced me to pick up Legendary Edition. I played a bit of two, but got bored. The talk got me interested about the lore and just side stories. Thanks, Jar. I was thinking about that too because I've been listening to like on like watching videos on YouTube, different thoughts on the collection. Mm. Mostly intrigued by people who've never played them before. Yeah, what they're thinking, and I've seen mixed things because I, I don't know how Mass Effect One would strike you if you'd, uh, mm. you know. Yeah, Mass Effect One was always the weak link to me, but I do want to say <clears throat> I have bought Mass Effect Legendary Edition oh, really? because of our talk <laughs> on oh, the cast oh, and snap. and when I briefly tried it, and Mass Effect One is really fucking good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it. It's just the gameplay let it down, but I think the gameplay is passable now with the improvements well, they've made. I was totally wrong about Mass Effect One to begin with. What do you mean? I always thought uh, because I I never played it as much as you, mm-hmm. and I was young when I played it. I played it once, maybe twice, and uh, yeah, getting to it now. This game is carried by like just the most fucking awesome world and the best soundtrack like mm-hmm. in a game I've ever f- heard. Yeah. yeah. No, the I never, I honestly never appreciated truly mm-hmm. like the actual work that went into the world building and just the the way those three games like intermingle. Mm. When you're actually paying attention to all the stuff that's set up in the first game that comes up in the third. Yeah, this is something as well. If if you only ever played them like I did just once through like yeah. Mass Effect 1, 2, 3 once each um, the, the amount of thought they must have put into the whole trilogy while they were working on the first one is like mind blowing yeah you'd have to have some kind of map some idea of what yeah. direction this is going yeah because mm-hmm. it it's almost better going through again knowing stuff that's happening in the future mm-hmm. yeah, yeah and now I actually properly am using the the whole dialogue tree is designed around this, like, investigate option. We are supposed to mm-hmm. investigate if you want the option of learning more about the lore and stuff. So yeah. now I'm actually just going through every investigate option and listening to whatever the nerdy lore stuff is. Yeah, I've been doing that too, but I'm actually blown away by how concise the beginning of Mass Effect 1 is. Yeah, no, as well, I was like, trying to get across a few episodes ago on Call Yeah, Coast. yeah. Um, it, yeah, that opening is just amazing to Mass Effect 1. How yeah, it, it, so quickly do you become like familiar with the world. It's, yeah, it, it establishes the entire conflict of the universe in that. Yeah, book. but not in like a forced, yeah, mm-mm. like bad dialogue expositiony yeah. way. It all feels natural. It's yeah, it's something special and definitely worth checking out. Yeah, hundred percent. Nubius Maximus left a comment on a sort of similar topic. How often do you chaps actually pay attention to the stories of games? <laughs> Way more now. No, I, I always less. pay attention to it. I guess it depends on what it's going for. Um, if if it's clearly going for a mechanics first thing, then I can ignore like a story a little bit. Yeah. Um, like you can you can like play through a Halo campaign and just ignore like the story mm. and just enjoy the gameplay of it. Yeah. But, um, 
when it's like life is strange or something you know where the, or mass effect like, or yeah where it's all comes down to the well it doesn't all come down but it largely comes down to the writing and if like your life is strange is full of the <laughs> cringy you know fake teen dialogue and stuff like that it mm. does I don't know I don't if I want to play a game that's gameplay orientated I will never play a single player game I will just play a multiplayer game you need some kind of hook to get someone into like the story side. Yeah. Yeah, but I I don't play story games. Is the thing. Like I've never I Red Dead, haven't played that. Yeah. You used to. Yeah. yeah I they, used, they to. used to be like your favorite. You love. Uh, well, you loved Red Dead One. You I love loved Red Dead One. New Vegas. Yeah. Mass Effect. Yeah. Like those were your games back but in the day. But now, as like an adult, I just don't have the time to invest in the story. I just want like a just a casual experience where it's just like mainly gameplay, like Apex, as you do, yeah, it. yeah, something like that. To answer the question though, I I'd say, well, like you said, like it it depends on the game. Mm-hmm. Like Doom, when I was playing both Doom yeah, one that's and two, that's a good two, example actually. It's a, I I couldn't give less of a shit about mm-hmm. the context because yeah. it wasn't about that. Because Eternal had like way more cutscenes and tried to do a story. Yeah, stuff, yeah. I didn't care at all. But I don't. I didn't take anything away from the game for me. No. Yeah, not at all. But on the flip side, Wolfenstein, mm. like it, you can't not pay attention to the story because yeah. it's so well told and compelling. Yeah, but the gameplay is not as tight or well designed no. as Doom, so it's the but kind of trade off. Yeah, it makes up for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in that stuff. Casino Productions left one for us. Question for Bungalow com- commit commitmenting. Just changing the name every week, like it makes it so confusing. If dinosaurs never went extinct, how would hu- humanity react to them <laughs> in modern times? Could you have a pet herbivore? Um, how would they affect technology and civilization? Are dino dinners a possibility? I think the dinos would have been extinct either way because we would have just learned to kill them. Yeah, maybe. I don't think there's a timeline where both like, exist at the same yeah, time it's, it's, I, yeah I don't think it's that possible. being said which dinosaurs could Mike Tyson beat <laughs> I Pe- reckon we'd like eat dinosaurs yeah. <clears throat> we'd, uh, we'd probably ride them well it's just like in that case it's like we wouldn't have cows we'd have like this a uh, uh, dinosaur equivalent that we'd, we'd farm and eat we just everything we have now would be a place of a dinosaur imagine if you could like farm titanosauruses I guess they are just like chickens huge chickens yeah, how much? How many people could you feed with one T Rex? Wow. Yeah, but then they're rare, so you're not gonna have, you're not gonna be able to farm them as much as any other animal because of the size. So you're no, we you don't want to eat the predators anyway. You want the you want the babies, the babies, the yeah. the like herbivores, you know. Mm. No, that's why you genetically just fucking ruin <laughs> dinosaurs. Like you make a T Rex that like his mouth is tiny, and it becomes a chicken. Yeah, just a massive chicken. Hmm. Well, if 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 humans and dinosaurs did exist at the same time, it would just be. Oh, survival evolved. Bite them. <laughs> <just> bite <laughs> them. Yeah, Vin Diesel would just wrap them. <laughs> yeah. Barry Blue is going to end this section for us. Well, battle passes are quite annoying. I feel like the Master Chief Collection does it well. It doesn't cost extra whatsoever, and you unlock everything as you level up, and every season is accessible at the same time. They also add really neat new content that don't fuck up the balance of the game like COD. It feels like I'm actually earning what I'm unlocking instead of paying money. I do prefer just being able to unlock whatever I want off the menu like in Reach, but I'd rather have this than typical pay-to-win bullshits. Mm, I don't think that would work in Apex or COD or any of the big big battle yeah. or bo- battle, battle pass games. I don't. Think I think it's fine. It's. I think they've adapted it to the games they're in. Mm-hmm. Like you can't have new content that's going to cost money for a game that is a re-release, and the content you get already yeah. exists in those games. <clears throat> and to me, with that one, it was just like a just a, too late. Mm. I'd already played the game so much, and then they're adding in these reward systems when you've already played it for like mm-hmm. tens of hours. It just seems like. Yeah, it feels like wasted time. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the Destiny problem where it's like they fix the system six months later and it's yeah. like I've already yeah. spent five months grinding in the old bad system. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like I've been screwed out of something. Yeah. yeah. I, I'd i say the Halo one is a bad example though. Mm. Really? Yeah, I think the Battle Pass system only works if it's being paid for. Yeah. 
There's nothing addictive. I'm not driven to try and like earn yeah. points in the MCC one. No, as, much, as much as we can say as consumers, you've got to consider the people making the game, and they're doing it for money. So that that system wouldn't, wouldn't work for any any company. But you can't yeah, pay so, for them in the yeah, MCC. Yeah, and if you can't pay for it, why not just de- design something fun? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, the the whole design... There goes Ruby. <laughs> the whole design of a battle pass <laughs> is, is, is the time limit. It's to extort money from you. Yeah, basically, but also that thing where if you buy one, theoretically, you can use what you make from each one to get the next one. Which gives more playtime, which makes money. Yeah, it, it, which makes you want, motivated to keep playing that. That's yeah. why it exists. It's like mm-hmm. a psychological fuck fest to keep us yeah. giving them money. So you can't you can't make that better than it is because it is a fucked it, idea. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think they're just experimenting with systems to implement to infinite yeah Yeah. you're probably right and if i saw that in infinite i wouldn't want to play it as like a i'd be fine with a normal battle pass because remember the multiplayer is free Mm -hmm. for infinite they'll have a battle pass but like this idea where you just buy what you want yeah it doesn't make me want to because the the appeal is that that level 100 thing is what you want so you play it all season for that thing you want i think what he means is like the reach way of doing it Mm. what's the reach way of doing it you have like currency that you build up and you buy in a store I prefer but, that. But the, yeah, um, I prefer that as an alternative. The stuff you buy is well. also locked behind your level. So, like, the really high-level stuff, you can't use the currency to get until later on. Oh, yeah. But it's just a battle pass system for getting the reach system. I don't think just being able to buy what you want when you want what it is. I think a mixture of the two would work for Infinite if, for the free-to-play people, mm. they can only use the battle pass to unlock stuff. Yeah. But for people that actually buy the game, I think they should be given more cosmetic shit. For the multiplayer. Yeah. Yeah, there is no mm. FOMO side to it, so it's just like... Yeah. You just let it sit. Yeah. Well, that's housekeeping, guys. Let's the do house some is now clean and sparkly and gorgeous. Where that do we want to go? Good. Where do we want to go with this? Where do you want to go? We can go anywhere, anywhere we want. Honestly. <sighs> How do you guys feel about uh, just constant rules changing? What, in regards to... Life. What, like, specifically the pandemic life, or...? Well, yeah. What's, like, some ad- ad- effects you weren't expecting? Um... I wasn't expecting for... You know, Corncast to get up to 42 weeks. Yeah. That's yeah, definitely sure. something I was not that's anticipating. That's close to, that's only 10 weeks away from a year. Yeah. That's fucking... Is it really? What? Yeah. 52 weeks in a year, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Jesus. It's fucking crazy. This year has been, has been shit. I mean, mm. like, the, the beginning of the year is... It's just been like a blur, just the same day on repeat. And now it's May. Uh, like, we feel like nothing's happened. We stopped. We we started uh, lockdown in March last year. Like by the end of last year, we thought, oh, maybe surely this can't happen again. Boom. We're in fucking May. We're in May, and we've only just started to come out of it. Our third one. Possible yeah. fourth on the horizon. Who oh, yeah. knows? Yeah, because I was like reading the news, and for once. It's the first time I noticed it in like a couple of years. It, the headlines were trending weirdly positive, and I was like, "This is, this is weird." Then, then the Indian variant started becoming the headline. I guess. Yeah, I just never know with the news side of it. Like, if if you're trying to like maintain some level of happiness, you can't be perusing the news twenty four seven. Uh, but no. how do you stay informed or know what's happening in the world without do you, reading about it? Do you think it's necessary to stay informed? Um, no. How often does being informed actually like matter or come in as useful during your day-to-day life? Depends on what circles you're in, I guess. Like, if you're a yeah. politician, like, you probably should yeah. be fucking informed. But as like a casual guy or girl or someone mm-hmm. who has like a, just a normal life... Like, you know, I go into the office sometimes, you know, and I, I, I see my work colleagues, and it's just like, none of the news stuff is, like, discussed. Mm-hmm. I'm informed about everything because I just Twitter and all that, and it's, like, useless. Who cares? Mm-hmm. I'm never going to use it. It's just like, I wake up, I go on Twitter, and it's just like, oh, well, that's another reason to be depressed, is this news in whatever country. 
But you don't want to be like blind to the world as well at the same time. No. Mm. There is a mix to it. You do want to know what's happening in the world. You want to be up to date on the comings and goings. Like, especially during a time like this. You know? Yeah, no, I think it's more necessary than ever. But it's also more depressing than ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, severely depressing. Like, Christ. I'm I'm not yeah. try, I'm trying to not use Twitter at the moment because of how fucking depressing it is. It's extremely depressing. It's like I don't need to see these pictures. Twitter is the this. one social media where I don't think my mood's ever been improved by going on it. It's only ever made worse by going onto it. Um, yeah. Same with Instagram. Even worse with Instagram. I found. <laughs> really? It's just you think like, so? If you're confident or happy of your life, Instagram. Pew! Well, the thing with Instagram is that you can, the algorithm, if you keep looking at shit memes, all it's going to show you is shit memes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that that works for me, like on the explore tab or whatever. Yeah. But then you've got to see, does, does shit memes not like mess with you at all? Because I just get annoyed at the shit memes for like being like really shit. The repetition. Mm. Yeah. No, I'm fine with it. It's like, <clears throat> it's totally harmless. Whereas on Twitter, if you follow one person, especially now, because you get to see like everyone's likes and shit, mm. every conversation, every comment they make, everything. Mm-hmm. So they're going to retweet shit, they're going to like shit, and you're going to see it all. Yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. Twitter is a space where like very rarely do good things get talked about. And mm-hmm. when they do, they're just swamped by the... Just fucking huge amounts of shit going <laughs> on. Yeah. 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 It stopped being fun a long time ago for me. Like Twitter it used to be kind of fun. Yeah. I still, I still do have fun with it because it's just like I try to detach myself from normality with it. It's just like if I can't understand the language these people are posting in, I'm not having a problem. It's just p- pretty pictures, and that works because it's just like, oh, cool, that's a pretty picture. Just yeah, like, well, the algorithms are like so designed to kind of promote these audiences like clashing. So you, everyone's replying and interacting with posts and stuff. Like you said, like now when you follow someone, you just see the followers of the pe- of the people you follow and shit. Yeah. Like it just shows you the stuff you don't even want to see. So yeah. you just wind up seeing all the most, you know, shocking or controversial yeah, stuff it's, it's, so my feed is just full of all this shite from people I don't follow yeah it's just about like popularity it mm-hmm. doesn't matter who you follow how you use the app if someone has a tweet that blows the fuck up you're seeing it yeah and th- to me that defeats the point of twitter why have a retweet button yeah if liking can do the same thing sometimes <laughs> like, but- and there's like a trending tweet section now yeah. that like pops up. Yeah, and constantly, I follow like 150 odd people or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and constantly I, I get these like topics recommended to me. Mm-hmm. It's like, do I not have enough shit yeah. just constantly on, on this screen? Like, why, why do I have a topic of like Hugh Jackman? <laughs> Why is Hugh Jackman topless on a yacht just <laughs> popping up in my, in my <laughs> Twitter feed? I get weird things like Dark Souls. This is a topic you'd like. This is yeah, I get that Dark one Dark Souls, yeah. like Zelda. It's DreamWorks movies. <laughs> yeah, I think I was listening to, to a podcast or something and they were saying, yeah, on the weekend I just don't go on any social media. Oh, damn, I, I wish like, I could yeah, do that. I don't mind that idea and concept. Um, but it's, it's hard to do in practice because of the addictive nature of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're incredibly addictive. Do you guys do that that thing that I wish I could kick where when you wake up, the first thing you do, you go on your phone and you just lay there f- until mm-hmm. you've scrolled all the way through like all of your social media. Yeah. Well, I don't do all of them. I'll pick a couple normally. Yeah. Yeah, no, I do it as well. It's like, get up, it's like, I need to catch up. I need to see what's going yeah. on. So you go on your Twitter, you just... Press the button. I don't do. I don't do it to scroll up. I press the button, so I go to the top and scroll all the way down through like two hundred accounts. It's just like fuck. Instagram, same thing. Mm-hmm. No, but with Instagram, it's like I want to see the stories. I want to see what people are doing. But it's always really? like I. I really, rarely use Instagram. Mine are um, Twitter and recently Reddit. Mm-hmm. I never go on Instagram. I'm so annoyed by all the Facebook products and. 
Like, I use WhatsApp, like, a lot, and I wish it wasn't the one that it settled on. Um, mm. And people are, like, moving to, I think it's called Signal, which yeah. is, like, what WhatsApp used to be. Um, but it's that thing where it's like, ugh. It's just going to be the same cycle. <laughs> yeah, the same it's cycle. It's the same shit yeah, it's over like it's and too over. big, and then it's bought, and it, yeah. Yeah. I can't keep up with social media. Like, you were showing me earlier this TikTok shit, right? <laughs> okay. This guy, do you remember his username or anything? I, no, I, I mean, this is <laughs> this is pretty normal for TikTok, to be honest. Um, oh, TikTok's the one I've managed to avoid, but thankfully. It was, it, it's a guy where his whole gimmick and his whole, he's built a, like, image and career around running on the spot, making it look like he's running in slow motion when he's actually just... You know, standing still. He's standing there. Shout out to Buster Breezy, best Buster fake Breezy. runner in the world. That's his. Is like, that his bio? Yeah. <clears throat> so his whole gimmick is like he's really good at fake running. Mm. To be fair to the guy, he is really good. No, at he fake is. Running. He's incredibly good incredible. at it. <laughs> he like he does the slow mo stuff, so <laughs> he looks like he's an Apex intro. <laughs> but like any niche. And I don't understand, like, why could you not just do that on YouTube and it'd be just mm. as funny, but I guess... Yeah, yeah it's, it must come down to the algorithms. Because you can't fake run for twen- for 10 minutes, hit that yeah, prime time. Yeah, true. You can't have the real short stuff as much, But I no, guess. but you're saying that, but you're forgetting YouTube Mobile is a completely different experience yeah. to YouTube. Well, yeah, like... Become the beast. Yeah, YouTube Mobile is bizarre. It's It's got the meme pages that only post memes. It's got the short Instagram videos, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's got... like every social media combined. Yeah, it's like and it's better there. than most of them. I've got a theory um, that meme pages aren't run by humans. It's the beginning of the AI no, upgrade. No. <laughs> no, who... Why would someone dedicate... Their time. What must be a lot of time to uploading pictures... Meme... Pictures of memes onto YouTube. Like, pictures on if YouTube. people are looking at it, I mean... No, but people... People do right? it on, like, Tumblr or on DeviantArt. No, but it's on Instagram as well, because it's like these... All of the meme pages post the same thing. Mm-hmm. So it's multiple machines just copying each other's algorithm and just posting. Or just one big machine. Yeah. It runs the whole thing. And this is what's weird, that memes are like an algorithm. You know? Oh, yeah. Memes get, like, morphed for as long as they can by, like, it's just the same shit over and over. And then it's a slightly new thing. Mm. But, but most of the time, they were, these pages are all there to be sold. They're not there to give you entertainment. They're there to make money. No, They're I was going to say that about Twitter, just the way it, like the the marketing thing on Twitter is really strange. Um, I had this this guy, I think he works in like the Silicon Valley, who like knows me from like years ago. He like texted me saying, "How much for N- N- Notaku to sponsor a tweet?" What? N- fuck you! You denied a Nutaku. <laughs> What's Nutaku? I think it's like a hentai game. So it's a hentai <laughs> oh, okay. game website. Like made in Silicon Valley. Yeah. No, like the guy lives in. Like he has. He. I guess he knows all these like weird sponsors and just mm, like tries right. to get YouTubers to like tweet porn hentai links out, or whatever. <laughs> um, I tried to like inquire just to see. Like I've never like. I don't know, like, what, what we're talking about here, like, what this actually means, but I couldn't get any more information out um, without, like, fully committing, because I'm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> See, I would. <laughs> what have you got to lose? Yeah, I guess that's how it were. Have we talked about NFTs on corn? Mm, briefly, I think. Maybe. I don't know. What do you have to say about them? What? I don't really understand it. Yeah, but they're nothing. There is something that people are talking about. They 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 are memes that are sold. Right? Yeah, like, Jack, all, like Twitter Jack, he like sold one of his tweets, right? Yeah, like his first tweet. No, but it's it's gotten to the point where isn't um Charlie bit my finger being sold? It's going to be deleted off of YouTube and sold, sold as an NFT. But the thing about that oh. is, someone's just going to download it and we upload it to YouTube. And that's what's going to yeah. Like, no, yeah. NFTs make no sense. It's like a receipt that you own something or that you own something. But you can't own it because there are infinite. 
How many people will have downloaded Charlie Bit My Finger over the years? How many meme pages do you think have it in the archives that the first fucking post is the yeah. Charlie Bit My Finger video? There must be thousands of re-uploads already on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. For That's sure. what they say though, as soon as it's online, like it's just there forever. Mm. Like you can't Yeah, yeah. You can't hide it, especially something that high profile. I guess they're just trying to milk it. They just want their last bit of Charlie money. <laughs> it's, it's all it's all like combined and it's all intertwined with the, the cryptocurrency bollocks. They all come from the same thing, that's why GPU prices are through the roof. Yeah. No, I, I was I was hoping that was gonna level out at some point. Um, it hasn't yet. But it just seems to be getting like worse. Mm. All that. It's manic. <clears throat> it it does feel like we're rocketing towards the future you know like the cryptocurrency is just a, a, a phrase that everyone knows now yeah bitcoin mining is just everyone just knows what uh, that yeah. is it's wacky it's wacky as fuck like just call them credits and just be done with it yeah. yeah like surely you're gonna start this it's gonna get to a point when you can you know you you've just bought the latest card or game and they'll be like well if you're not playing the game if you leave it on we can crypto mine and give you in-game <laughs> yeah, currency yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. surely a thing they must be thinking of that like th they will use your console to mine actual cryptocurrency and give you in-game currency as a as a fucking <laughs> yeah well they take like 90 percent of it yeah and you get the 10 percent cryptocurrency spare for that which goes get... straight into COD points. Exactly. It's like, why isn't this a thing? Surely Activision must know this. EA, if you want some investment tips, hit us up. They've already stolen it. Fuck's sake. So I'm on Mass Effect 2 now. Um, I can't remember if I said I finished 1. Yeah, um, you blasted through it. You're addicted. You're yeah, straight a gamer. Addicted. <clears throat> um, Did you do everything in Mass Effect 1? Not everything. No, there's, didn't. no okay. there's no way I'm doing all the side stuff in that game. I, I just straight up think it sucks. I think I Oh, might. no, no, no. Uh, really? I'd do it if to you experience it, but it's terrible. I'm pretty sure I've done it all the way through once before. No, you'll do it until you get to like one of those planets you land on. And you, you go to this, like a base, you go in, some bullshit means you die. And then you're like taken back like half an hour's worth, and you're like, yeah. no, nah, I'm just going back. To the no, there's some interesting else. stuff. I don't know. I, there's what the only thing I'm curious of is in the first game they had one of the biggest like background things for the whole series was a ball, and you go to the ball and it gives you this whole fucking law thing about ball. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, I know what you're talking about. I want to know if it's they like changed a, that. A Prothean ball. Yeah, and it tell, tell it's like p portraying the future of you or something. Like, in which one, sorry? Mass Effect One. Yeah, it's in the DLC of 2 as well, I think. It's just like a murky ball. Yeah. And it looks like a meta like mercury. Like a big ball of mercury. I don't know what you're talking about. But you do it. When you do it in the first game, it just gives you a paragraph that explains the law. Really fucking interesting stuff to do with the law of Mass Effect, mm -hmm. but it just portrays it in a paragraph. A big box. I just wonder if they changed that at all. Because oh, if, well, they they if they made it a cutscene, way more interesting. No, all that stuff's the same. There's it, loads of weird, like, uh, little descriptions in Mass Effect 1. Yeah, I, I love that shit. I do as well. It's, yeah, it's it, very pen and paper. Yeah, it's uh, really, RPG. like, classic RPG shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, yeah. there's a narrator sort of thing. Yeah. Shepard I do want to... found footsteps in the yeah, dust. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Super cool. I do want to briefly mention as well, um, Mass Effect 1 on mouse and keyboard is better for one reason. Mm. And that's because the hacking minigame is different. Oh, what is it on PC? Oh, yeah, so I've it's it. it's like a multiple wheels and you're an arrow and you sort of go around it while other things are twisting and you have to avoid it's like Frogger. Oh okay. You, it's like a mini Frogger game instead of just like Y A X. <laughs> yeah, because that just wouldn't be a challenge. I get well, it isn't a challenge ever. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just super a boring game. Frogger's Frogger is a sick game though. Frogger's awesome. But I'm. I I would really just underestimated this whole thing, like just what they were d tinkering with behind the scenes with this stuff because I'd forgotten how much like I just adore Mass Effect Two. You were a huge Mass Effect Two. Fan. Like I like I've never been more obsessed probably with like a piece of media like a story or something. Like, but I'd forgotten about how much I liked it because of three and like the letdown it was, and then I was mm -hmm. kind of written off. Then Andromeda came out. I'd forgotten about it all. Mm -hmm. So, jumping into two after one, 
Because the main reason I was interested in the Legendary Edition was to just see what they did to one. Yeah, that's why I was um, interested as well. But then going into two and being like, oh shit, like, this is the game, this is how I remember the game being. When a few months ago I actually downloaded the original version onto my Series X, the 360 version of Mass Effect 2. And it was a bit like, yeah, this isn't how I remember it. It's not. Mm-hmm. Like, it feels fucked, like the resolution sucks, like the frame rate sucks. And that's like a lame feeling when you go back and it's like yeah, not how totally. you remember. But this version is how like how I remember. It improves things, like it looks so much better. The Just the resolution of everything, the, the graphics of it is so much more detailed. And the gameplay too, just having the feedback and shit, like, just brings it all home for me. Yeah, that's something about Mass Effect one for me um because if i did play mass effect one original now it's it's trash well i'm tempted to download the 360 version of mass effect one yeah just to have a look at that intro just to see how like muddy and it's it's not just graphically though the graphics are the only thing i have a bit of a gripe with with mass (laughs) effect one yeah because it it does lose some of the the character that is something i stand by Mm. Some of the the moodiness. Yeah. The, the contrast in colours. When you make everything just have realistic lighting, it's it's sort of wasting the potential of video games where you can have, like, this totally virtual artistic space mm-hmm. that just couldn't exist. No. I do see what you mean. Um, but the only thing is you have to think about when that original game came out, it would have been 720p. If that. 30 frames per second, if... And that game was... Do you remember how badly it ran when mm-hmm. on the, when it came out? Um, the loading screens, the pop-in. No, all that shit is so much better now. Yeah. And but, the but I think game. like that it was it those decisions to have that blurriness, to have that moodiness, was partially affected by the decision of the of having to mask the look of the yeah. game. <laughs> so yeah, it, but it's one of those things where because they were limited, they ended up making something slightly mm-hmm. better. Yeah, because of it. Yeah, that's definitely a, a debate in the community at the moment, um, and I'm sure there'll be like modders that go in, in the PC version and try and yeah for sure get it to look. Yeah, it's it's the same problem with um the Dark Souls remaster. The Dark Souls really? remaster is much worse than mm-hmm. this Mass Effect one, but yeah, it just loses this grit. Yeah, but I'd, I'd f- just forgotten how expansive Mass Effect Two is. It's so bloody long. There's so much yeah, to do. Yeah. But they do. It doesn't drag like parts of one. No. Where they just they nailed like the systems and the way they all interact and how you're just doing like a bit of combat for 15 minutes, bit of story for another 15, then you're mining planets for another, and then it's just perfectly paced in the way it's all designed. I do you like the planet mining? Um, I'm okay with the planet mining that now that I know that it works. The game can be kind of overwhelming, I think, if you don't know, like, what's up. Yeah. I remember yeah. just playing Mass Effect 2 when I first got my hands on it. Like, you just have no idea what the scope of it truly is, because it is selling this, like, space opera, you're jumping around planets, like, just actually how much shit is there in this game. Mm-hmm. And it is, like, tens and tens of hours of stuff, especially with all, like, the DLC and shit, because you said you never played any of the ME2 stuff. Never. And like, and you're saying, yeah, I don't remember any of the side stuff being that good, but ME2 has so much DLC and so much of it's really good. Mm-hmm. Like, did you play the one that has that weird like vehicle that you're like flying around? Is the Overlord DLC? Overlord is really good. The only one is the is the Cerberus like one where you get the flying vehicle. That's terrible. Yeah, that was like the pack in. Yeah, but the EA, the EA yeah, yeah. online pass. But in the Overlord DLC, I think you use that vehicle. You do. That's how it ties in, and that's actually a really fucking yeah. good DLC. It's yeah. really, really interesting, like, subjects it brings. So, yeah, I up. mean, we touched on this a few episodes ago, or whatever. But I'm curious what you'd think playing all that stuff as well. Especially because yeah. you hadn't before. Because I keep finding things that I never experienced because I'm making an effort to, like, play with characters I never did and do things a bit differently so I actually hear dialogue I never heard and stuff like that to try yeah. and get a new experience. What I'm trying to do is um, like actually see if the game parts are good as well. Mm. I've put I've not put the game on the hardest difficulty but I've put it on hardcore. Yeah. Or whatever. Um, 
what what surprised me about Mass Effect One is how fun the combat actually is. Yeah, but you, you get into a real rhythm at a certain point. Yeah, I mean, even early on, I've I've not played for very long at all, but like, just the the um, progression, and everything, shit's fun. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that it, it is Unreal, isn't it? Yeah, Unreal Engine, the ragdoll. Yeah, immediately makes shit fun. Yeah, like, it's awesome. You can really like cheese the Geth Walker things when you're in the Mako. Yeah, you just you drive just, into them. Yeah, just tap their yeah. legs and they fall over. Um, it's pretty funny. Yeah, it's not perfect by any means. No, but there is fun to be heard. And just yeah, I I, I respect it so much more now, and I think just the fact that the the screen moves when you mm. shoot. Mm -hmm. There's and like there's a bit of feedback, yeah, yeah, feedback, and the your accuracy doesn't just immediately go from like, mm -hmm. perfect to awful. Yeah, no, it's amazing how much just slight tweaks can improve that whole thing. Yeah, because I I was of the belief wrongly that it was unfixable. I thought it was that bad originally. That <laughs> no, it's just it aged. Was, yeah, yeah, it was just that. Yeah. Yeah, there was something else I was going to say about two. I can't remember. Yeah, insanity. Because I've been playing on insanity. Mm -hmm. They for this edition, they've definitely tweaked the difficulty. Um, Mass Effect Two is way, 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 way easier on insanity than it was on the 360. Because um, I've it's been bringing all these like memories back of playing it on insanity on the 360, and like having these like hair pull out moments because they were so stingy with ammo for some reason on the 360 version. So. It was, you had to be so careful of like every shot and it was so difficult. It was basically no fun. It was really annoying. But now I'd almost say it's on the verge of being too easy with how much ammo they, they rate you with. Um, but you actually get some good combat out of it instead of just that really boring, hardest difficulty play style where you're like hiding miles back. You just go and then yeah. hide until your shields yeah, are back yeah, yeah. and you're like, wait, yeah, waiting minutes at a time. So you actually have proper combat because I, I did that. It's one of the first, like, main points of the game. Um, where there's, like, a... Uh, I won't say any story thing. Um, but... I forgot what my fucking point was. I forgot. I lost it. Difficulty... I want to say I tried Mass no, Effect. No, that's... Sorry, yeah, no. Because there was this one mission in Mass Effect 2 on the hardest difficulty that was so ridiculously hard and it was that mission um, for those who played it the the first time you kind of interact with the collectors in that game um, <clears throat> no, there's you're... like a boss at the end of that level and it's on insanity no, on the 360 no, 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 fuck. no for Alex it was yeah, like, you're, you're, no, it, you're I'd, bringing back memories for me I tried that I did I started Mass Effect 3 <laughs> on a hard difficulty it's in the it's where you first meet Ashley or Caden yeah, yeah. It's yeah. right there, and it's an open courtyard, oh, and there's God, trucks yeah. of fucking boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it fucking floats around. It's got barriers, shields. <laughs> it's got like these all laser the eyes that just get yeah. and like just aim at you. <laughs> I think I did it on not insanity. I did it the one below. Mm -hmm. I spent a fucking like two hours doing it. Died. Never played it. Yeah. Again. I was just like, fuck this. This is dumb. So I did that bit yesterday, and I did it first try on insanity. Um, Would you say it's like the perfect level of difficulty then? It's that thing of the first few hours are really hard, but as long as you... Because I know mm. the game so well, I like know where to go to like get all the upgrades that will help yeah, me. Yeah. Then I do the combat stuff. So I don't know if that's just helping or... And I don't know if... Ever since playing Apex and just it like turning you into this like aggressive monster... Goon, a goon. Like, <laughs> yeah. you just, like, when I play against like the AI Mass Effect now, I'm just like, you just figure out what they're capable of and then mm -hmm. just abuse them. Just abuse what they're Goon is the way in just life. Everything. <laughs> you just have to find the just goon. goon your way. Yeah, if you could goon your way through life, f do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm enjoying Mass Effect 2. I wanted to bring it up again. Um, it's just going to be a Mass Effect kind of month or whatever, I'm afraid. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling that too. And I'm glad. Yeah, no, I was not expecting to kind of reconnect with this franchise at this point. No, because I, I feel like I've been gaslit by Mass Effect 3's ending and then the entirety of Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's it, funny how much optics, like, really affect stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, like, especially Andromeda. Yeah. I remember, like, starting it and just being like, 
this fucking sucks. Mm-hmm. Mass Effect just isn't very good, is it? Yeah. Like, it, you start convincing yourself. All it takes is one Andromeda. Yeah. yeah uh, That's they, one where it's like, it might have been worth just eating the loss on it. Yeah, I think they should have. Because like, they have they have killed Mass Effect. They can't make a sequel. Because, yeah, because they, like, released the trailer for this new one, like, months ago. Did anyone... One? Yeah. No, no, that's, Wait, that's I, we talked about it on Corn. Wait, new what? A new Mass Effect. I didn't know what. When did we talk about what? There's, there's a new Mass Effect. They, what? Yeah, they they there's like a trailer for it on YouTube and shit from what? months ago. This is what I mean. Yeah, no one did, cared because I did not like, know this was a thing. Yeah, there's like a CG trailer. Bioware announced it. There's a new Mass Effect. Liara is in the trailer. I think. I can't. I might have got that wrong. See, uh, now I'm, I'm now I feel like I have seen it, but I ha- I don't think I have. This is what I mean. Like it just it didn't connect. It didn't mean shit <laughs> because of Andromeda. Mm. Um, I, I genuinely can't remember. I can't it? think. Yeah. yeah. No, when we stop recording, you're gonna like search it. Oh, like, okay. Like, you'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you just didn't watch it. I mean, but I, d- I don't think they can fix it. It's pointless. They. I I think what they should have done is uh, Resident Evil 2 remaked Mm -hmm. Mass Effect 1. Yeah. Instead of doing this remaster. Yeah, because then they could remake the whole trilogy perfectly. Yeah, change the ending of Mass Effect 3, make it actually possible to make a sequel to, because that's what truly fucked it. You can't continue from what Mass Effect 3 gives you. No. And... Yeah. Because I went down that rabbit hole again um, mm-hmm. when I was like doing the washing up or whatever. I was watching the indoctrination theory because I'd forgotten all about it. it. Hasn't been on my mind. Like Mass Effect has been on my mind, but not in this level. Like the actual story, the lore, and everything. Yeah, it like ejected from my mind up until this point. So I've been thinking about the ending a lot, and I'm like getting all nervous now because I'm like so into it and where it's like building up to. I know where it does conclude, so I want to be, like, prepared. Fascinating movement, though. That there was, like, two, like, nearly two-hour-long documentaries that this guy made. Yeah. That he actually has deleted. Um, you can only watch them as re-uploads because he, like, was, got too much hate from it or something from mm-hmm. his eyes. I don't know. You should just leave them. Fuck. But, um, They're masterpieces. Yeah, it was, like, such a... Like kind of nostalgic thing to go back and watch those videos because it's like from such an old era now. Yeah, yeah. such a different era. Um, because because in the first theory video it was before they released the DLC of um, mm-hmm. uh, you know that first. Well, it wasn't really a DLC, kind of a patch for the ending. It was before that patch, so he was saying like they could fix this so easy if they just do A, B, and C. Yeah, there's so much hope they could. If they they could they've got a decision here they can either make this the best franchise ever the best story ever or they can make it the worst you know all this kind of cringe this, this kind of stuff um, yeah yeah it's like hyperbolic or whatever but it's kind of true though I think yeah. I think they shouldn't have changed the ending at all and not said that the indoctrination theory wasn't real and just stolen it yeah because it is a more satisfying ending or at least not deny it. Yeah, I hate that yeah. they denied it, because they yeah, because they could have just left it, left it like lingering in people's minds. Yeah, and then done this where they remake Mass Effect one, Mass Effect one, two, and three. And triple, triple it in. Yeah, mm. and then just have that as the ending to Mass Effect three. Boom. And there's like a whole revelation moment. I don't know. Oh, could you imagine? Yeah. But the three endings you're presented in three. Well, yeah, Fucking because I'd for- I'd forgotten that Mass Effect three script leaked. Originally, or I don't know if it was the script or the plot outline, some mm. details on the story leaked, which led to them changing the ending of the game to to whatever it is now. And on top of that, the game was rushed. Um, yeah. They did not have the time they needed for that game. Like, I can't believe how quickly they made ME2. Like, it's only, I think it only came out two years after. No way. It Actually, it might have no. been three. It might no. have been three. No, Mass Effect 2 came out in 2012. No, no it was 2010. Mass Effect 2 was 2010. I don't yeah, think it, it was. was not 2012. That's yeah, the because Halo Mass Effect 3, out. remember, Mass Effect 3 originally was going to come out in 2012. But it was pushed to 2013. No, it did come out in 12. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it was delayed though. Because EA wanted that shit out quick. Mm. Yeah, fucking idiots. They ruined it. Yeah. They ruined it, and then what did they do to fix it? Mass Effect Andromeda. Another rushed piece of shit. <laughs> they... Yeah. It's fascinating, but kind of sad. At least you got Mass Effect 2 out of it, though. Like, yeah, the M1. M1. Both t- great. The 2, they like nailed the, the whole formula, but. Well, I've got disappointing news. What? Some stuff's been leaked about the new battlefield. Yeah. Instantly no interest in it. Why? What's They're from? making near like modern times which is near futuristic. There's like leaked robot dogs. It's like <laughs> it's like advanced warfare, like ghosts type stuff. Which is so, like Is it like because there was that battlefield game that was like robot mechs fighting? Twenty one forty two. But that oh, was the old com- one. Yeah. One of the yeah. old ones, yeah. That th- that has like a, a cult following because it's actually like properly futuristic and it's got all these unique game modes. But I don't think the new Battlefield is going near that. They're just like it's modern, but it's not. It's like futuristic. Yeah, I- I've heard a lot of shit about this being like a future. I thought near future, fine. Mm. Have like those, unless the robot dogs are like the real robot dogs that exist. It could be. That's oh, the yeah. thing. That could that, be creepy. That would be yeah. But at the same fine. time, I'm not sure. Like uh, the screenshot looks, it doesn't look like yeah, futuristic. I've it seen a more. tiny screenshot, and mm-hmm. it looks like, like the vehicles and stuff are all, sci-fi. Fut- yeah, sci-fi shit. I just that's like I don't they, give a shit. They need to, well, they needed to like play it safe. I After don't know why they just f- didn't go through like all the major wars or whatever. Like they were doing. No, they didn't need well, to. They should have. What, Battlefield they need to? Bad Company 2 Vietnam is one of the most like praised Battlefield things ever. Mm. Incredible. Just do a Battlefield I thought that Vietnam was where game. they were going. I could have sworn like Yeah, cuz they did but they did World War 1, World War 2. They could have done like the Korean War or something, mm. which is a, new, a thing nothing has never been done yeah. in a major game. Yeah. It's just like Modern Warfare, the recent one. We've talked about it loads. We've praised COD for all it's done. It's modern. But it's not futuristic. It's modern now. Mm-hmm. But it's not this futuristic, and it nails it, and it's fucking huge, and everyone loves Modern Warfare. Why can't Battlefield do that? They've made so many fuck-ups recently, that it's like, how many more can they do? Yeah, like going back to the EA fuck-up optics thing, mm-hmm. they really killed it with that. It was the, it was the sequel to Battlefield 1, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, Battlefield 5, the trailer. They killed they killed the the whole game with that one trailer. Yeah, no, that that was mm. it. It was that and, trailer. And then their like retaliation to the people that thought it was stupid that there was a woman with a robot arm in World, in World War II. Two. <laughs> if anything, it's just kind of disrespectful. The <laughs> robot arm thing, like that was weird, really weird. It's like they nailed it. They nailed it really good with Battlefield One. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was just yeah. World War One. The trailer, the way the game opened, they fucking nailed it. So what do they do? They take this. They take what they did with Battlefield One, this realism grounded, and they made it just fucking stupid. In what yeah. Battlefield Five? Well, I mean, like they obviously took liberties with the World War One setting. Mm. Like had all these prototype weapons that weren't actually used, but yeah. you know, makes for fun game. Yeah. But like robot arm, really? It's like given all of the things that happened in World War Two, the is the. It's huge. There's so many aspects of World War Two that's never been like said or done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you choose you that. You could have World War Two as the setting and make tens of games, surely. Yeah, yeah well, they some... did. That's what well, yeah, like, yeah. first-person shooters were yeah, for like exactly. ten years. <laughs> and it's just like, why would you pick that? Why would you pick this kind of weird? But if food? if you want to, just don't make it World War Two. Mm-hmm. Have like this weird Elseworld like mm-hmm. f- shooty game. Where, like, it's that sort of era, but you can take liberties and have your own artistic... No, Valkyrie input. Chronicles. That yeah. is World yeah. War Two focused, but it does its own things. It's not set in fucking in the world. It's, yeah, like, its exactly. own thing. And it works. It works with these huge fucking tanks that are, like, five stories tall and mm-hmm. dumb fucking cannons. It Honestly, works. I'm way more interested in DICE making a Battlefront 3 and actually just yeah. doing it properly. Mm. Yeah. Because 2 is, like, in a space now where it's like, man, if this... If this was the game that came out when you like launched. Yeah, and then expanded on that. Yeah. See, like, the, that, thing that, there. the thing with that, the thing with Battlefront Three, with the success of Fallen Order, Respawn are going to be re- might be pushed in. Therefore, it will probably be good. Because mm. Respawn, they are but the. There's also studio. just so much Star Wars stuff now. You could have like Bad Batch content in your. <laughs> 
Yeah, which I've been watching a little bit of. Out of ten? Um, it's, um, I wouldn't say you can really give it an out of ten rating yet, because there's only been like two or three episodes. Oh, is it releasing like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's pretty good. I, I like the like the gimmick of like the, the the clones being the main characters of the Bad Batch are like clones from Star Wars that were like went a bit wrong. <laughs> the Bad Batch, <laughs> yeah, the Bad Batch. Um, but they're also like I don't know. They're quite distinct. It's it's definitely it's it's quite kiddie in ways. Um, yeah. A bit even more so than some of the Clone Wars stuff I've seen, but it's kind of sick. I'm just glad people are getting it, and like Filoni's written it. It's got yeah. his, it's got his fingers he, on it. He's the guy now. He's yeah. the guy you have he's to the get. Star Wars guy. Yeah. If but... you make new Star Wars stuff, you'd have to have his fingers on it because he's like the weird padawan one to George. <laughs> <laughs> did Did he actually like work with George Lucas? Yeah. Mm. On the Clone Wars. That makes I think. A lot of sense. I think. I think the story goes that George plucked him. Really? I think. Because um, I th- he was on Last Airbender or something. Because mm-hmm. um, he's on the first season of three on The Last Airbender. And he does some of the best episodes, I think, from season one, from memory. Um, yeah, and then he did a great job on Clone Wars and just became the Padawan master. But are you not concerned that the f- Star Wars fatigue given they've just come out of a trilogy I mean, and all that. I would say we're already in Star Wars fatigue. I feel like we're in post-Star Wars fatigue. Yeah. I think episode nine was the peak of Star Wars fatigue. And now we're just like... Because it was fresh... like, no, uh, that was the point everyone just agreed. Yeah, nobody gave a shit. Yeah. We don't want Star Wars if it's going to be this. Mm-hmm. You know? But we've talked about that plenty. Mm. Before we go into the second half... Um, I did want to shout out a movie Jim and I saw. Yeah. That being Akira Kurosawa's Ran. Um, gosh, where do you even begin? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a classic samurai film. From 85, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, based on King Lear, Shakespearean mm. work. Um, I didn't know that going into it, and I was sort of expecting a a, a somewhat schlocky cowboy esque like More samurai like film, simple hero villain type thing. Yeah, and this film is like existential crisis type shit. Mm-hmm. Like, it, just everything about it though is incredible. Yeah, it's masterful. Even just like on a production level, I was I was turned on to this movie. Uh, it would have been a few years ago now when Ralph the movie maker he uploaded his Ralph recommends video on mm. on this movie and the imagery was burned into my my retina yeah after seeing just a few clips from his video and i mean it applies to the whole movie yeah like it's su- it's such a vivid color palette and the costumes and the the environments that they jump around to i was saying to you um you never think for a minute the time period of of when the the film was made. It was made in the eighties, obviously, but mm-hmm. it feels timeless. It feels like it, f- it, it feels it, like the era they represent. Yeah, it almost felt like a documentary. Mm. Like somehow they'd got a camera, brought it back to that yeah. time, and just filmed. It was that meticulous, and these like just these dense shots of hundreds of people all in the, like this armor, yeah, like recreating horses, these battles. It's, charging. it's actually stunning. Um, and the story, of course, like if you're basing it off like Shakespeare work, you've got like a backbone, mm-hmm. the strongest backbone possible to work off. But the way it's adapted into like Japanese culture is so fascinating because I, yeah. I remember in year, I think it was year nine, like trying to study King King Lear and Shakespeare, and just not being able to connect with it. I couldn't. I, I think it was something to do with being that age and just the way it's written it's so flowery and like you don't even yeah, understand yeah. English like really yourself at that point. So I could never connect. But when, when you see the story presented in this way, the main character is just such a tragic, like, like gut punch. The, <laughs> um, yeah, it's I don't want to spoil anything, but like 
it has such an interesting journey with that main character. And I was like trying to like guess where it was going. Oh, this must be the payoff here. Oh no, it's going so- a different direction that's way more interesting than I ever could have mm-hmm. thought. Yeah, it's, it was masterful. It was such a like, joy. Um, yeah, and it's one of those films that when it ends, at first you're just like, what? Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. You can't do this. And But after like 30 seconds, you're like, fucking hell. It's, it's just like so genius. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, so I think that's the next, the next one to jump into. It's the various samurai flicks. Kurosawa movies. Yeah. Um, it's been a big spot of mine that I needed to fill in. Mm-hmm. So the old like Japanese cinema, there's so much of it. There's so much great shit to find. Have you ever delved out of anime and into live action Japanese film? No, because you can't watch them because you can't get them. Well, I'm saying not, that, yeah, the the only reason I watched it, or one of the main reasons I watched it, is because on the Amazon BFI player, whatever it's called, at the moment a bunch of Kurosawa movies are on it for streaming. So mm. that's like, a good way of doing it. There is a whole fucking bunch like really interesting Japanese movies I want to watch, but I just can't. It's like I think I've spoken about it before. Like this, I can't remember the name. Yakuza one that's Itchy the Killer. Oh yeah, I've been been wanting to watch that. But it's just like, to watch it, I have to buy a £10 subscription to a horror specific streaming service. I want to watch it because it looks vivid and looks fucking wacky. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not paying, I'm not adding another subscription to watch one Mm -hmm. movie. There's loads of others, there's loads of like cool gangster movies, like Yakuza ones and whatnot. Just can't watch. Because there's whole, there's so much there. But I just can't, can't watch them. I did see, though, that the creator of Berserk passed away. Yeah, yeah. Kentu Omiura. Do you think I'd like Kai. that? Because it, everyone always brings up Dark Souls when it comes up. Mm-hmm. Was it like a huge inspiration? Yeah, no, Ber- Berserk is an absolutely huge uh, inspiration. It's inspired like every single Japanese thing with swords in, basically. Yeah, really? Like Final Fantasy. What's Cloud. the hook? Like, what is the... The, the, the... the What Berserk is, it's, the, it's Guts' story. Guts is the main character, and it, it starts off as him... You know, as a, a young mercenary, and it goes through his life and his backstory and what happens because there's the golden era arc, golden arc, I think it is, where that is the 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 first arc, and the, how it ends is why you're like, fuck, I need to see this through. I need to see fucking guts. So do it's knights this. fighting each other. Is there like a no, fantasy element? No, there's a fantasy it's, element. Yeah, very much fantasy. There's loads. There's gods basically. There's like demon gods. I can't. I'm. Berserk fans were like, "What the fuck, James? That isn't right." <laughs> yeah, because like, I've remember. never seen anything from it, so I don't even know. Like, like with like Death Note or some shit, I know what the hook is. You know, the book yeah. that kills you, people. You, I don't know you, what it is. It's the guy with a huge sword, and he like fights monsters sometimes. Yeah, okay. you, to get the hook, sword. <laughs> you need to see. <laughs> yeah. You need to see the last episode of the first of Gold, the Golden Arc, because it's just like it all makes sense. Everything you just, you just know. And I can't spoil it because it's just like fuck. Have you, you seen see any of it, Jim? I've watched like four episodes um, on YouTube. I there's no particular reason why I stopped. It's just like mm-hmm. what, what I saw just, was decent. The with Berserk, you've got the first original series, which is from like the nineties. It's quite cheap animation. It's got its style. It's yeah. beautiful soundtrack, mind the meme soundtrack. It's super <laughs> meme. <laughs> But you've also it's difficult to watch unless you're a Berserk fan already. But there's there's a there's three movies that recap the same arc. They both cover the same arc. It's modern. It's the fight scenes are all CG, so they're bitter. But all the right. actual close up shots are hand drawn, mm-hmm. and it covers the same thing. Really easy to watch, and it, it is just the same. And it is also very good as well. But like, I, I'd honestly be tempted to get the the manga. I've I've read the 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 manga, the the art is fucking beautiful. The way yeah, he yeah, draws, I've seen, a bunch of I've seen pages from that, and it does look impressive. The, the shading yeah. he does on like the face and the mm. armor, it's just like, how the fuck did you do this? This is fucking mental. Yeah, yeah. I I really like Berserk. I own the limited edition fucking Blu-ray and DVD. I want to get some of the manga. 
I like really like it, but it's just like trying to read the manga. It's like it's so long and it's it's not. Yeah, that's the only barrier to entry. Oh, is it like seasons and seasons and seasons type shit? It's like infinite. Isn't you it? spend it nine finished, years, nine actual years on a boat in the, the manga. Oh, at nine really? physical years for one boat journey. Like it's. I'd be curious to see what the Jowlings say. Berserk um, is crazy. I think you should watch it. It's crazy. I love Berserk. If enough people tell me it's worth it, like they did for Avatar, um, yeah. The that's... thing is, there's no, there's like nothing to lose. They're 20 minute episodes. That's if you and watch the all, anime. They're all on YouTube. No, the only thing that stops me is just when it's not on an, a streaming service I already have. Yeah. When yeah. it is, then it's like, well, Avatar's there. I'm just gonna fucking. It's well, yeah, exactly. so convenient. That's so what I mean, easy. though. Like YouTube. Yeah, I didn't realize it was on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, 20, I just randomly went. James mentioned that I should watch it. Yeah, because I, I was watching it at the time. I was like, at work, it's just like berserk <laughs> work. Because it's easy. Because you'd be surprised, it. like how many movies are on YouTube, like full movies, and mm, it's gonna get really? better and better with that stuff. With the just the older, let me check the older movies that that get into the um, public domain. Yeah, that of will course, just be allowed yeah. to be on on YouTube. It's actually becoming quite a good resource for finding mm. movies. Like, I, it's how I watched a. Uh, Raw, I think it was that weird movie with all the, the like lions and tigers and leopards and shit that these mental people had oh, like. In this... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. People know what I'm on about. Well, I'm just checking what it's what the movies are streaming on, and uh, Netflix has popped up. Oh, is it on there? I feel it, it might be on the American myself. ones. You might be. Oh yeah, yeah. Or... But yeah. the f- the thing with Berserk, it's much like fucking Andromeda. It had a recent anime that was fucking oh, no. all CG, uh. really cheap CG. Like it was the meme. It was just like everyone was slagging off the recent Berserk film. But it's like if you watch the movies, I don't know people's reception on them, but they're the easiest way to watch it. They're all like two hours long, free movies. Boom. Then you get to the last scene, and it's just like you're fucking like. Ah! <laughs> getting like fucking mad and it's it's great just watch berserk just read berserk just appreciate berserk because that man was a fucking legend and his his art his work deserves to be appreciated the, there is something to be said about these long form stories that often come to fruition in in tv shows um there is something about it where you can just properly really with a lot of depth explore so many different fucking ideas in a way that you just yeah. can't in a movie mm. um i find it to be like the most satisfying way of cuz cuz you're combining like a movie is 2 hours of like you have a lot of room in there to explore a lot of things but you do have only 2 hours you're limited but yeah. in a show you have so much room to explore like so many ups and downs of different characters and just really delve deep into whatever you want to. Yeah, I think it's a great way for you to go on an arc with a character mm-hmm. because you you have so much time to be with that character. You you can sort of learn to agree with them. Yeah. Know, and understand why they're doing things that might be wrong, but you're still like on their side. And there's such a skill to... Um, and this is on my mind because of that Amazon Prime show, Invincible, of like establishing a story and having like the greater narrative like hook, and then having smaller stories going on to like distract you from the greater one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just so satisfying the way that they can come together, and that's a good show I'd recommend. Um, yeah, I need to watch it. You know what else? What? We're jumping I've around like crazy, but just go are, in. I've all, This is on subject of anime, because Berserk. I've almost finished season two of Jojo. Oh, cool. Yeah, we've had loads of questions asking for I updates can't, on I that. can't fucking... I love fucking Jojo so much. I hate myself that I was like, ooh, Jojo, for so long, because I'd been on fucking 4chan anime boards, and it's just like, Damn. ooh, Jojo. Jojo's fucking sick, man. It's so fucking <laughs> cool. So I what, love it. Do you like it more now than season one? Or No, I... Yeah, <laughs> season two's fucking dumb as fuck, and I love it. <laughs> like, I, I... Like, because I'm trying to watch it, because I used to watch anime on in bed on my on my phone on this you know it's Damn. tiny screen 
So what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to watch it on the big screen in my lounge, but my mm. parents aren't home Monday morning or when I'm off work, and I'm had I've had sort of such better time by doing that. So I I can only watch it at certain days of the week. But, but between then, I'm like listening to the opening and I'm just like, fuck, man, Jojo. <laughs> yeah, you can't sick. watch it on the phone. No, just, you just watch the opening. Watch Stardust Crusaders, the opening. It, 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 it fucking pops. What do you watch it on? It's on Netflix. Really? Yeah. Oh, is it? Season one and two on Netflix. Oh, oh. I didn't realise it was on Netflix. <laughs> I might watch it then. Maybe I'll just, give it a what, try. No, honestly, I'm going to show you the opening after this is done and you will get it. it it's so fucking good. <laughs> okay. Damn. Well, uh, we've been rambling on for a bit, so we'll see you after these messages. Life can be a dick sometimes, so get your dick from out your hand. And don't be a dick, wear a dick. Dick the Head t-shirts available now. Check the description below. Good afternoon, morning, evening, hello, hello. Oh, Jamie. <laughs> so, uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, James. You might see that I've swapped positions. Unless you're listening to the, the audio version on both Spotify and... I Is it still iTunes. called iTunes or Apple Sounds? Apple Sounds. Apple iTunes Plus. Apple Noise Plus Sounds. I. Yeah, I think it's still iTunes. You can catch us on there and... Uh, but you 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 want the full experience. You want to head over to uh, YouTube or Pornhub, and you'll find us there. This is the question segment, right? Did you say the bit about going to Reddit to leave questions? Or if you do have a question for us lovely boys, please head over to our Reddit at r slash fnaf. <laughs> that one's that's oh, okay. r slash jar media. Leave us a comment in the top thread, which will be. Jarcast episode X questions and we will do our very best to answer your lovely questions. And every time you you post Dingle Day, for every single time you say Dingle Day, I will slap James once like this. Oh. <laughs> what Dingle Day in the comments? Dingle Day. Every Dingle Day we every get. Every Dingle Day. Every I get single slapped. Dingle Day. <laughs> James gets one slap per dingle day. <laughs> so head on head down to the comments and have a dingle day. <laughs> Irresponsible Gaijin's gonna start us off. If the Jar Boys were the crew of a World War II bomber, what would their roles be? Pilot, bombardier, ball turret gunner, etc. No, the ball would see the ball turret gunner position in, in one specific um, American plane was underneath the proper ball turret. And that's the one you don't want to be in. The, yeah, yeah. The, the most expendable person gets to go in the ball turret. Because if the hydraulics <laughs> in the plane failed from getting shot, you can't withdraw it in for landing. So you just get crushed to death as the plane landed. Yeah, but also, like, if you're <laughs> bombing a place and they're shooting Whoa. up at the plane, you're, you're in a glass ball beneath <laughs> the plane. So you're just getting so, yeah, shredded. Yeah, but, <laughs> so I I, I'll volunteer for the, the <laughs> ball. I'll take the ball. No, because you, you got the... Pu- I don't know. How like, many are there? I watched like a Dep- weird um, um, YouTube video of like a turret gunner being like interviewed. I think it was one of those like lad Bible type videos <laughs> or whatever. And he was saying like, yeah, you've got to like switch your mind off at a certain point because like the people you're gunning down are like fucking being obliterated before your eyes and you've got to sort of check out at a certain was, point. You know? Was this the AC-130 guy, the, uh, the Winnie the Pooh? I, th- that sounds right, yeah. Yeah, it, it was um, a, a war veteran... Like Gunner interviewed in VR chat, and he's Winnie the Pooh. It's like yeah, the darkest the thing. Yeah, yeah the, it's like one of those algorithm videos where it will yeah, yeah, I've seen, I've seen it on my feed. Yeah, yeah, everyone's seen it recommended. Mm. Yeah, I, I actually started watching it, so it was like funny Winnie the Pooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I watched the whole thing. Or Kermit the Frog or something, and um, yeah, I, I watched like five minutes of it, and I was like, this is just like it's really dark, really dark and sad. Yeah. So I I went off it, but it, it is like it's a it's a well made video. Mm. Back <laughs> to the question: it. I'll be the pilot then, because I'm good at flying things and driving things. Someone, one of us has got to be good at dropping bombs where they need to go. Who's the turret guy? Well, Jamie's the ball ball turret guy. Yeah, I'm ball turret. What's even left for me to do? Bombardier. You're the you drop the bombs. Is that what the bombardier does? Yeah, I guess it's a bombardier. What? How do, how do they control that? Do they have like a lever? Or do they? It's get like it? a sight line. No, no, you, you no. sit you sit in it and it's a sight line and it's like 
so far ahead that when you get to it in your sights, you drop them and then oh, they're falling. Yeah, you just sit there and kill. Or you could be like Jesus navigation, God. like, you know, there's loads of position. Or you can be a co-pilot, you know, it's a bomber. Well, actually, on this topic, tighter than bark on as a question. Hey, boys, I saw Saving Private Ryan recently because it was leaving Netflix in the USA. It was such a well-made war movie. It reminds me of how much James loves that movie. Made me wonder, what are some of your guys' favourite war movies? Cheers, mates. Um... Well, I happened to rewatch that movie a few months ago because I saw it there on Netflix. It is very good. Really, it's really very good um. I just like the concept of the group, the ragtag group that has to defend against the odds that they just absolutely should never be able to win against. Mm. Um, it does come together really well at the end. Yeah. Um, it I, is hard to beat. Yeah, as as like a movie that's pure spectacle. Mm. It is. It is the mm -hmm. best. Yeah. It's just like if you Vin want Diesel. Vin Diesel <laughs> carries the film on his shoulders. If you want something that's pure visual, that's the best one. But if you want, obviously, if you want something that's got a bit more meaning, it's like Apocalypse Now, Full Metal Jacket. You know, it's I always ones. forget the one that Platoon. Platoon. That is an incredibly good film. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still wanting to watch Apocalypse Now because it's. Yeah, like I want to watch Apocalypse Now and Platoon. I've never seen them. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Platoon is up there. Um. Yeah, Apocalypse Now. Um, this is going to sound lame, but even though it's only a portion of the film, I think Forrest Gump. Really? Yeah. That whole, I suppose it does have war involved in it. Yeah, the the Vietnam bit, and then the way it continues throughout the movie, like post-war with uh, Lieutenant Dan. Mm -hmm. That whole shit, it emotionally just hits home. Um, another one that I have seen, which I do like, is Black Hawk Down. Yeah, you used to be obsessed with that. One. Very good, very good movie. But it's like there's so many incredible war movies that I just haven't seen. Um, like, you know, uh, Wan is on here apparently. Um, yeah, like mm. The Deer Hunter, Finn Redline, We Were Soldiers. There's loads of incredible war movies. Have you seen Dunkirk? Yeah. Oh, I saw it in the cinema. Yeah, of course. I thought it was Would that be up there? No. That that's visually incredible. Yeah, yeah. But I only saw that like, once. So I've, I've actually got it on 4K. I need to rewatch it. Um, yeah, I only think that movie, like same Five Wine, has likable characters. Dunkirk is only visuals. It's only good at visuals. It's like there's nothing. Yeah, because that's going why. On. That's right. That's why I didn't rewatch it because I heard it d isn't as effective on like the home screen compared to in the. I I cinema. saw yeah. it in the cinema, and you know yeah, they're on same. the beach, and the the dive bombers are coming mm -hmm. in. It's screaming. It's so that's, loud. Yeah. That that's why you watch that movie. I'd never. <laughs> what is she doing? No, stop doing that on the cast. That is minging. <laughs> What have you been doing? She's like licking her asshole and then just breathing everywhere. <laughs> oh, she licked her asshole and then had like oh, this yeah, splutter. Like really like, <laughs> oh, it like really smells now, Pace. <laughs> this is why we don't want you on here. Pace, Pace got dingled. <sighs> dingle breath. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dingle breath. <laughs> That's fucking My answer would be um, Come and See is a war movie that um, I, I recommended for Sardonicast. It's like a Russian war movie. It's really fucked. Come and See? Wait, no, I, I think I remember... I've been the told... The poster's like the little boy with the... Yeah, come and yeah, see. Yeah. It's about, like, war atrocities, isn't it? Come and see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It didn't... Like, there was difficulty, difficulties of it being made, apparently. Oh, the yeah. the Russian government yeah, like, didn't the, want it to happen. Yeah, the backstory is fascinating for that one. Yeah, no, I, I do. That's another one I need to see. Yeah, there was a period where I was avoiding them because I just found them so... Depressing. Deeply depressing, mm. but... Like humans and war just go hand in hand. You can't really ignore it at a certain point. No. Does Star Wars count? Yeah. I, I like that. Does. I like the originals. Jonathan SVG11 has one for you, Jim. It's the poo breath getting to you. Yeah, it's fucking getting, getting to, me, to me as well. She's panting as well. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> breath. Did yeah, Jim yeah. ever finish Community? I'd love to hear his quick <sighs> thoughts on the series as a whole. Also, Mr. Robot. Um, yeah, I, I did finish Mr. Robot. Um, Community, I can't remember if it was season four or five, I just fell off it. You got to the shit bit. Yeah. <laughs> but I th I'm pretty sure I, pus I pushed past the shit bit to where it got kind of good again. But... I normally lose steam by then as well. 
Because I was rewatching it around the same time you were yeah, watching yeah. it for the first time, and I always fall off once it gets shit in the yeah, off the, season. There was like a golden age of it. Mm -hmm. The the first three seasons. One to three, yeah. It's like Arrested Development. Hmm. Yeah. I I don't think uh, it ever got as bad as as Arrested as, Development. As, as what Arrested Development turned into. Well, there were, I found out recently there are like hordes of people that like think the Netflix seasons are like underrated for the. I think they're really bad, the uh, Arrested Development. We're, they're not funny. No. You, like, never laugh. They're so fucking mm -hmm. awkward and weird. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, even with the bad seasons of... Uh, of... Community. community. Um, the cast does sort of carry it a bit. Yeah. They, and that's why the show starts falling apart, in my opinion. It's because the cast starts leaving. Yeah, yeah. All the best characters just... There, there was a... A really weird bit, just before I I s stopped watching, where I noticed that um, in a certain episode, Chevy Chase is like green screened into a scene. Oh really? Yeah, it's like a shot reverse shot, mm -hmm. but he's obviously like not, not there. there. <laughs> That's all good. And when that happened, it was like That's a real problem in Arrested Development. Yeah. In that weird Netflix. Season. Yeah, yeah, really bizarre. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd never made that connection, but they are oddly linked in that way, where they went. Well, Mr. Robot, though, because you finished that <clears> like <throat> months ago, would have been at this point. Mr. Robot is probably in my top three, maybe top two best TV shows of all time. Damn, didn't realise it was that high for you. It it was a show that was so good to me, it, it became like a part, especially in lockdown, mm -hmm. like a part of my life. And yeah, when it yeah. ended, I felt like, well, no, I feel now that. what? I definitely feel that when I'm like, when I have a new like story, when I've got my new story, when I'm like, mm. when I have the, like the wire or something, when I've got my avatar, you feel like you've got your purpose while you're just going through the story, getting all the beats, and then it ends and mm -hmm. you feel like it's, it's something lost. Yeah, especially an ending like Mr. Robot that's mm -hmm. incredibly melancholy. I don't, it, it's so melancholy. You think so? It's the definition of melancholy, like it, because you, it, it, it's not sad, but you've lost something. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, yeah, I think it's a must-watch, and it's a show that I'm sure would be talked about more if it wasn't like early Amazon Prime. Do you think so? You think if it was on like Netflix or something? Yeah, or HBO. Mm. Yeah, I could see that. But it, 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 everything about it, it's got this this perfect tone. It's got this perfect tone that's like, it, it, it knows when to add levity, but it mm. never takes away from uh, when it's being serious and shit. Yeah, masterpiece. Straight up. I don't think there is... Even a bad episode that yeah. I can think of. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe this is why we never have dogs on the cast anymore. Yeah, they're fucking annoying. <laughs> Stop. You just sit there just like licking hey. her entire body. No, she's licking the floor. She's just where? licking the carpet. Where her arse was though? <laughs> she's licking <laughs> the fucking arse floor. That's so gross. <laughs> um, should be gay, left to comment for us. <laughs> Do you guys get annoyed when Americans refer to you as being British? Do you have any preference between the labels British and English? It used to annoy me. Yeah, I remember when I was like a teenager, it used to annoy me. I'm not British, I'm English. I'm actually English, <laughs> It's the same fucking thing. Yeah, I don't care. I yeah, don't I mean... I, I'm, I prefer Britain as a thing that includes... <laughs> stop. Uh, genuinely stop it. Stop it. <laughs> she is so gross. <laughs> you sloppy fucker. No, no. I think this question needs to be turned the opposite way around. How so? Because I've been called racist before. Because I referred to an American as an American. <laughs> What do you mean? Yeah, I called an American an American, and they called me racist. <laughs> what? what? What were they meant to be called? <laughs> a Floridian? I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, who actually like people? Just 
from the United Kingdom. Why does it matter? Come away yeah, I, d- I don't give a shit. I think I prefer Britain as a thing as opposed to England. England. Mm-hmm. I think Britain yeah. is a much better catch-all. Mm. Flip flops has one for us. <laughs> what games do you guys think utilize the medium of video games best in order to tell their story? Uh, it's back off the line. Simple question. Answer. That's it. I don't know. I'm trying to think of games where you actually cannot experience anything like it without it being a video game. It's back off the line. I can't I add to that because I, yeah, I don't know it. about Spec Ops. No, I, no, it is. It is an answer. Why? Because it's your involvement in Private Walkers. Well, my problem, my that... problem with Spec Ops is that I feel like that story would still be fine and work without being a video game. Hmm. Like it's still like interesting. Um, no, yeah, that's the thing. It could. Whereas, like. I don't know if it fully applies, but I, I think of the way Red Dead 2, the way the, with the map and the way the map kind of reacts See, to the no, way you... I don't think it's fair because... Just because we've just gone from Spec Ops to Red Dead, they're in two completely different eras of gaming, where gaming has become so much more advanced, but I think it's more possible to make games that are only terrible through games. Yeah, well, I'm trying it, to think of the medium. It, it depends, because like uh, Bioshock... Obvious answer. Mm. The the story it's telling is about the medium of games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily utilise the fact that it's a game to put you in that position. Mm-hmm. But it but it also it does. It it is a story that can't be told in any other medium. No, it wouldn't work. I feel like um, companies like Rocksteady are quite good no, at No, um mm. uh, Breath of the Wild. That just wouldn't work at all. Um, the it, it depends what you mean by story, because there's like the story of that game, which is trash. Yeah. Or like the stories that you make mm, through experience. Yeah, is that like a? Uh, is that considered like a bad take? That like the cutscenes in that, no. that game. No, like, every, everyone agrees every, that yeah, they are okay, good. shit. <laughs> no, um, when I played it again, I had to change it to the Japanese. Yeah. Voice acting yeah. with subtitles mm-hmm. to make it bearable. See, that's probably why. That's where I went wrong. I went for the. Yeah, you should have done that. You're used to reading subtitles. Yeah, I'm a proper weeb. Um, definitely not games like The Last of Us. Uh, yeah, because they're they're trying to be more cinematic. Yeah, they're, they're trying to be movies, no, or TV or miniseries. I think like the the old or still the the COD games for the most part. Um. The Last of Us games, Uncharted, they're kind of reductive mm. to what a video game can be. What about something like Mass Effect then, where it's almost like the logical next step of your like choose your own adventure books or something yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah. I think Mass Effect is good, but I'm sure you could make a Mass Effect movie work. Well, no, but Vegas. the whole like choice and is part of it. Yeah, it is. Because um, no, I've never been down with this like Mass Effect movie. I think that's an awful idea, personally. I, no, I'm not saying it should be done, but I think if video games, like in an alternate dimension, video games never existed. and Mass Effect right. could exist. I think. I think the universe could be put into a book or a film. I feel like there is like a better example of... I, I, I think The Witcher 3 is a better example of the choice thing being integral. Mm. Because it's not a case of, I'm going to be a good guy for this run I'm going to be a bad guy for this run because mm-hmm. I'm, do- I'm doing Renegade on my Mass Effect thing and like oh, are you? You, you are just straight up a fucking yeah. asshole you're like, like a monster a especially in two a despicable person e- even in one like there was this this mentally ill guy in the first level mm-hmm. and I just knocked him out I just punched him because he was annoying Shepard <laughs> like yeah he's he's pretty mustache twirling yeah he's a terrible guy but yeah um, The Witcher Mm, that's been I say that it's been I I, I don't think this question uh, like New Vegas you can't make that for anything else yeah it's New Vegas yeah totally because New Vegas is sort of like with the Mass Effect where it's almost like mm, a bit choose more, your own adventure but even more so mm-hmm. like you can't what could, how can you adapt a New Vegas story to like a TV uh, yeah, you I fucking think, can't I think New Vegas is like pushed so far into the choose your own adventure thing that it's like become its own 
thing. You cannot adapt whatever they were doing with that. Would like defeats the point. Like but, adapting it, it like defeats the but point. But at the same time, there's what Fallout Four you could fucking easily adapt because it's got none of New yeah. Vegas. Yeah. Like easily just main story. Boom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. But um with the the, the question was about utilising games as a medium, right? Utilize the medium of video games best in order to tell their story. Yeah, it, it's so. Such I'm an trying to think pitch. of like games that achieve a story without relying on breaking the player experience down to cutscenes that are mimicking movies. I'm thinking more yeah. like the ending of Arkham Knight, where it's like an interactive. You know, you remember the way that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rocksteady are incredible at um at that sort of thing. But to go back to The Witcher, what's surprising to me is that I've I've read like three of the books, mm-hmm. and the games, specifically three, do a better job than a TV show at, at adapting like that character. Yeah, and you do feel like that character mm-hmm. when playing The Witcher three. Yeah, I guess um. How do you feel about games like Inside or Limbo or something like that? Or or even Dark Souls where... Dark Souls... I think Dark Souls, Sekiro... It's like the... the I do think Sekiro. It's the pinnacle of, um... Like, there is no... Uh... What's that fancy game journalist word? Oh, pseudo-narrative Pseudo dissonance. dissonance. <laughs> yeah, there's none of that, because the story is built around it being a video game. Mm. But it's also a good story. So it, yeah, Sekiro is a good one because it, you you can't just ignore the story completely. But mm-hmm. there is all the all the clues to contextualize the world yeah, around you. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it's crucial for like for games to tell a story in in a way that embraces like oh, the ways video games can tell stories. I don't think you have to have choices. No. Yeah, I'd have to think on that one to be honest. Hmm. Like, there's 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 something in the back of my mind that feels like is screaming at me, but I can't find yeah. what what it is right now. You know, one actually is uh, Resident Evil Two. Really? Why? Because you feel like you are trapped in a horrible place, and you yeah. are. It's it's just the fact that it's so efficient at scaring you, mm-hmm. even though the consequences are nothing. Essentially, like you true are horror. Always motivated, though. Hmm. You are. You always feel like you're motivated. Yeah. In that game. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Resident Evil Eight, even. Like, and Seven. Yeah, they work in that way. And uh, a game I brought up ages ago, uh, Darkwood. Hmm. That is. Yeah. It's like a perfect. Um mesh of story and game it makes you do shitty things because like that's what you would have to do it's the mm. only way you can progress and you well, yeah because that reminds me of something like papers please yeah uh, no that that is the peak that's the best really? utilization of story <sighs> told through a video game i've ever played really yeah without a doubt yeah it is a gene it it's just something about finding like the simplicity, the the angle, the simple yeah. angle to get you in, and then making it more complex. Which well, just the, the idea of making the video game a job, mm-hmm. like it, it makes so much sense, and like, yeah, it's a fascinating question though, and it's what is so interesting about video games to me is that you can just do like movie shit if you want. You can yeah. do that, or you can do something that like no one's ever even conceptualized before. You can do yeah, some crazy yeah. shit no one's even thought of, and both are like legitimate and are respected within the same industry. Mm. It's it's, a, it's cool. It's very yeah. I don't think we're interesting. I don't think we're anywhere near um, like what video games can do, what they're capable of. Doing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think we've scratched the surface. Yeah, because I, I was thinking a bit of Control, which is a game I played early this year. 
and that game gets like truly like wacky and weird and like they they just do not care about any restrictions they just do whatever they want and that is really really fun real existing person has an interesting one I recently watched your old video on Morty Press, and I remembered that in a previous cast you mentioned how that character was based on an awkward friend of your parents or something. The representation of this person seemed a bit cruel, you know, saying things like, nobody attended his funeral, and I was just wondering if you could clear some things up about this guy. If he really was as weird as you portrayed him, or if it's just a childish exaggeration of reality. This isn't a pressing question by any means, I just felt the video in the background story was fascinating. Have a nice day. So, see, I wasn't involved in Morty Pest. So that was just the you and me. Yeah, that was just thing. we were like I just filmed you day, being you know? cranky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it wasn't like parodying someone I knew. Yeah. Um, I... what I was probably referenced in that cast was that there was this guy like Dad knew. He was like a photographer or like an a I think he might have been an amateur photographer or something. And the only reason he was notable to me. Or well, like wacky to me is that he had like this crazy hair, like that just went out. It was like long gray hair that just went crazy, and he was always wearing these like weird like leggings that were like, you know, when a guy like wears le leggings, they've obviously got junk there. So there's always going to be like a fucking weird bulge if you're wearing shit like that. So that that was the guy i was referencing and like that was maybe where i got the idea for like a quirky weird photographer or something man with a hu with huge junk is what you always <laughs> what you based the whole character but yeah it wasn't like it, it was like some guy that like my dad knew and i was like yeah i'm going to make fun of him but like yeah that was, it, it was spare of the moment like yeah no it was just like it, walking there was no floss. plan yeah we 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 were walking flossy and you had your camera yeah who is this person you're talking about though? I don't think you ever met him. Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did. Yeah, because it was around the time I was doing photography, I think, at Sick Form. Right. Um, yeah, so uh, maybe it was another inspiration. I don't... You can't um, answer weird questions like that, because we don't know. It's just like, it is, it's just a, a creation, you know? Well, yeah, maybe I could see someone putting it together in their head, like, wait, so what, you made this, like, video to make fun of this, like, person you know or something? But, like, that, no. <laughs> we made videos to make fun of ourselves. It's what yeah, we actually that's did. what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, we just really wanted to be bullied. <laughs> yeah, and bullied we were. Why <laughs> we show? Fucking worth. Speaking of being bullied, Holden Cases says, Hey guys, your comments on history were super interesting, as I'm a history minor at university and study history for fun in my free time. I know you guys discuss different eras, but what do you think would be the worst historical event to live through? Uh, I have seen a video on this, like... There was like a there was some person who knows something said that there is this definite definite like time that is the worst. Oh really? Because it was like post like Black Plague or something, <laughs> or like all these other various fuck situations. Yeah. No, that... when I read this question, the plague like was the first thing that jumped into my head. No, the 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 plague is fucking disgusting. You'd get like these these bulbous like balls of blood on your body, and they'd like pop. And it just fucking blood everywhere. What a fitting word for it, though. Yeah. The plague. Plague. It would be something like that. Like, uh, it, it's like you can't compare normal times to like something like the fucking Black Death. It's just like this is agonizing death over months to normal other events. Like if you think of the uh, the the eruption of Kakatoa, and that mm -hmm. plunged the fu like most of Europe into a fucking like winter for the fucking year. Probably miserable. Loads of people died from yeah. starvation. Terrible. Well, I mean, the the fact of the matter is, there's countless historical events you could choose that would be like. Yeah, yeah that that one in Russia, uh, d was it Which definitely one? Russia where they had to start, like, putting up signs and shit saying "Don't eat your children." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that must have been pretty fucking bleak. Unless I mean, they just really liked eating children. I just feel like even. Even being a soldier on a side that wasn't, like, on the losing side it would still be... Well, ju just being a grunt in the trenches in World War I. Like, you could That's just... a good answer, actually. Is um, After I watched that Peter Jackson documentary about World War I... It was, I like, still need and, to watch And that. there's, like, a section about, like, P 
people that died just getting stuck in like the mud. Mm -hmm. So you don't even think about it on that level. Where it's like yeah. Oh, yeah, in the trenches when they're just like all this digging, it's raining, the terrain, like it just gets so sloppy and gross. And if it's just like a war zone and they've got no prep, you're just fucked. Yeah. You, tren but, you do get your trench foot, you are eaten by rats, you've got no supplies. But it even that, e even if you're surviving fine, um, and like, you you're, it's very likely that you're fucked up in some way. Like you have trench foot, and then suddenly, oh, your your side decides to use uh, mustard gas mm -hmm. on the enemy. Oh wait, the wind's changed. Yeah, I'm just being mustard gas. And then there's the mental side on top of that as well. You're like, you're there with all your your friends or whatever. Yeah, and you don't know what's going. It's that. It's yeah. You're like a f you an cannot actually conceptualize quite how horrendous it would be. Um, <laughs> Shows like Band of Brothers, like they do their best to try and like they have the interviews with the the people that are actually there trying to describe it, and and it is so emotionally engaging, watching these people tr just describe what they went through, but you'll never understand it on the fucking level they did. Yeah, and I'm fucking glad I don't. Yeah, it's 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 hellish. It's hell. So some uh, med uh, medieval historian has said that the worst time to be alive was. 536 because uh, there was like this weird there was this fog over Europe and it plunged the entirety of Europe into darkness for 18 months night and day and dropped temperatures to like 1 degrees oh my god and then like after that there was a fucking plague like a few years after that and it's known in history as like the dark ages and nobody knows why the dark ages because it's just, just fucking dark and 1 degrees all year yeah, that's that's apparently one of them. Honestly, once you start removing like plumbing and just like basic shit yeah. you take for granted, yeah, everything everything's fucking shit. Every, yeah, like, every just anyone garbage. from our society like plucked and just put back like the Roman times. during like Nero's reign, where he's just killing people. Yeah, like, like, we're just not miserable. equipped in the same way. We're softer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are way softer. Mm. I I couldn't live a hundred years ago. A hundred? I think I'd cope with a hundred. A hundred. Two hundred? No, fucking no. Nah, you're forgetting how shit it would have been. A hundred years. In the 1920s. <laughs> 1921. Nah, you, you 19... really want to be around in 1921? Wait. No, 1920. Yeah, that would have been peak Spanish flu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you just, just roll the dice on in history. No, it... That is like a, a weird thing though. Like every one hundred years, there's a there's <laughs> a fucking a calamity. There's a De flu, not just a calamity, a, a pandemic, mm. or at least epidemic. It's COVID it's like the this year. Man. It's just cycles. It's yeah, Spanish flu. And everything is cycles. Well, we're not going to live through the next one, so yeah. Right. We Good won. luck, <laughs> fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> Disappointment soup has a weird one. If given one year prep time and seventy-five thousand dollars, could Jar take down one Roman legion, around four thousand two hundred infantry and three thousand sorry three hundred cavalry? The battlefield is up to you. After the year prep time is over, the Romans epically teleport in through an Avengers portal and will not leave until Jar is destroyed. You cannot hire outside help with the seventy-five thousand. Um, so the, so how so what? How many? That's four thousand, right? So, four thousand two hundred infantry and three hundred cavalry. So we're talking about we're talking about a legion of Romans, right? I think the fact that you can't hire anyone means we. Yeah, fuck. yeah, kind of. But also, how much ammo can you buy, like in America, <laughs> for seventy-five grand? If we just went to America, dude, yeah. If we were just there, armed up in yeah, America, just loads of weapons. Just like a turret. <laughs> <laughs> See, no, this... Yeah, because they wouldn't have any... Yeah, what the fuck could they do? Like a shield made out of no, leather? No, no, but here's the thing. Four of us... No, because they would overwhelm us. Yeah, they, there's they, thousands they, of them. They, the you can't win in that situation. You'd have to play it where... 
You'd have to. I, I How was much just does a plane cost? <laughs> <laughs> well, like a yeah, like a helicopter with yeah. a turret. On it. <laughs> they can do anything. <laughs> See, no, because no, helicopters. What, you say we have seventy grand. Yeah. So we're, we're not going to be able to buy a helicopter and machine <laughs> guns. Yeah, like 70K. a cheap second hand one. <laughs> <laughs> fucking what a be Like you know the the little fucking Far Cry ones. Yeah, yeah. Little, <laughs> all the yeah, Mad Max ones. Yeah, no, I, I was just googling like Roman defeats. Because to, to actually win, you've got to consider environment. What environment would best suit uh, lesser numbers against huge numbers? Because there's loads of the times in history. position that they've got high ground. Learned. Yeah, high ground. With your helicopter or turret Machine or guns. Yeah, your machine. just loads of machine guns. Just four mounted machine guns. <laughs> As they're trying to come up the hill or something. Yeah. It has to be like a hill. No, no, because that won't work. Because then, because if you're constantly finding a machine gun, you're gonna blow the barrel eventually from overheating it. You're well, then we buy loads it. of them and just change. We just seventy-five grand's worth. How, like, Ameri- how much do you no. think a machine gun's worth, boys? What? You don't even need like. Okay, though. No, let's machine gun, machine gun. No, okay. just whatever gun is equipped to take out a Roman. You know. Well, well, M two four nine saw cost. Let's see that they nine. No, millimeter. not a saw. Not a saw. Why not? Think Russian. <laughs> oh, fucking RPD, yeah. RPD, like RPD. Um, apparently, fine, I'm just getting stock prices. No, you'd have to. This is a difficult one because it's like no. The, the truth is, it's unwinnable. No, it's the numbers. No, no, no. It's not. It's not. It's it's not. Because <laughs> what were the Romans good at? Right, land battles. What were they bad at? Sea battles. We put the Legion on boats, so then they can't get us because they're melee. One speedboat with the turret on the back. <laughs> there you go. Oh yeah, that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> they but like do. when they come through the portal, though, would they just fall out into the ocean? <laughs> no, I imagine them like charging out, like in the movie. No, but if the, if we're in the middle of the ocean and yeah, they charge the, out, the they just fall down the the water. <laughs> into the sea. Because the, yeah. the, those boats would be fucking. Yes. Yeah. So they. Th- so all the. So the cavalry wouldn't be able to do anything. Because they're on a fucking boat. So they would be in their armour with their little fucking little sp- spiky bridges to get us and we'd just have a speedboat with a fucking yeah. flamethrower. Two- they'd be like with wood. <laughs> just beep, boom. Yeah, I think your your tactical prowess has won the day for us, James. It's just time I remember in the, the Romans versus the Carthage, the Carthians, <laughs> Carthage, and they were like a, a, a sea uh, like military. Boom. Genius. History knowledge. Boom. Let's do a couple more here. Tied to your apron has one. Hi lads, a recent cast was named after a question my brother asked. Disagree to agree agree. That's the one. Though we are both path... (laughs) Though we are both both past the points in our lives when we were obsessed with entertainers, I'd, I'd be lying if we didn't both get really excited over this. He said it feels like he's made a sort of contribution to the cast. And I can definitely understand why. Jar is a big part of our entertainment diet, and I've been following Alex since IHG had about 10k subs. So to not only have the question read, but also highlighted in the way that it was is pretty epic, especially for him. I was wondering if any of you had a similar experience with anyone you follow, whether it be acknowledgement at some sort of event, or having a comment highlighted by a YouTuber. Cheers, Ming- Mingers, keep up the terrible work. <laughs> Uh, uh, the IHE because I had my own fucking segment, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah. Um, I've been. I there's a YouTuber I like. He he's a car guy and he's in Japan. And he was just posting this thing like, yeah, this this fucking website. The, these other YouTubers just stole my content, and I was just like, yeah, I'm a YouTuber, and that's a, that's a fucking bullshit, and I don't support those channels. And he was just like, yeah, it's like this agreement, nice. and it was just nice. I got a reply from Drang Bricks um, when I asked him how he does his stickers so well. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Ever since he gave me the advice to use uh, tweezers to apply stickers, so it changed the game. Look back. Yeah, of course he knows like the, all the tips and tricks. <laughs> got to go to Jam Bricks for any Lego mm. tips. Oh but, no, that was that time I got I I, <laughs> I got acknowledged by that fucking Watch Mojo guy. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> oh yeah. Wait, I, 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 you know, I often think about that that fucking Watch Mojo email I got. <laughs> the guy who like runs Watch Mojo, or whatever. I felt like I was, I laughed so hard because I was like, like twenty years old. Like at this email from the guy who runs Watch Mojo, like 
listen, kid. Fuck. <laughs> it was like the cringiest fucking email, and I couldn't believe because to me it's like the ultimate win, like being like the troll, like trying to get yeah an attention from them, trying to get That's attention what, yeah. from people, and you get like an email from the guy who runs Watch Mojo, this res- this site you fucking hate, this channel you fucking <laughs> have no respect for, and they send you this email, and they're like, and then, and you're just like, man, I really got to you. Yeah, I clearly really fucking yeah. got to you with what I said in that fucking five minute video which means there must have been truth to it (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean who can deny but i mean they've met uh tom holland and you haven't so (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) well in saying that next week's uh guest is (laughs) (laughs) mark (laughs) ruffalo um it was a big deal to me um getting like spill yeah i knew that would be one for you Um, yeah yeah, you used to ask them questions, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. They had a similar segment. I always liked that, like, sending in questions to podcasts I listen to and stuff. Um, yeah, that was my kind of thing. Yeah, I don't really have one, to be honest. I'm trying to think. Yeah. I, I don't really use the internet in that way. Most people don't. Most people yeah. don't comment. Yeah. Um... It's just freaks like me that do. <laughs> hmm. Stinky. Let's do this one from Adventurous Airline. Happy Victoria Day, Gooners. I just started drinking and I've had a few beverages that I like. White Claws, some ciders. But I really am not enjoying beer. I've had Bud Light and a Corona. I was wondering what some of your beverages of choice are and what some good beers to get started with. Um, Thanks. definitely not Carlsberg. That shit sucks. Yeah, um, Corona? Nah, you only have that with family. Uh, is it quite normal to not like beer at first? For sure. Gravita- yeah. Gravitate towards the ciders, your... Yeah, sweet it's, shit. It's easier, yeah. Yeah, just sweet, sweet things that don't taste of alcohol. And then most people don't go from beer to just whiskey, like I did. I just mm. skip the you beer. Did, yeah, you skip beer, you skip cider. I suppose it's I like, just like, like, whiskey. Some, like yeah. spirits with like Coke or lemonade or whatever. Yeah. Um, best lagers, beer and Moretti. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Corona is only really nice with lime. Mm. Yeah, you need to. If buy you don't have lime. that slice of lime, yeah, trash. Um, Peroni. Peroni's good. It's nice. It's good. Yeah. Um, Honestly, on the cheaper side of things, Bex. Bex ain't bad. I this think one's not, 64's nice. Yeah, 64's a good, like, middle ground. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, nope. Budweiser and shit. It, it's, I don't it's, like it's very that. watery. I can't with, Bud, I can't with Budweiser. It's, it's very it. tasteless. Yeah. Um, tasteless which I, I'm fine with. Like, it's fine. But... I used to be much more into ales, but they're mm. so hearty. That That's the thing. I really, I love the taste of ales. Mm-hmm. I like that experience. Um, old speckled hen. They are heavy though. <clears throat> old speckled See, hen. I don't is, think is I don't think Americans should. are getting an old speckled hen. Well, they should. They'd be a, a prodigy because this person the was m- talking about American like White Claw, which is yeah, definitely yeah, true, and cider and stuff. So it's like hard, it's hard to give advice when the the alcohols in our countries ever, and their uh, countries. Bud are Light. Have you ever had Bud Light? No. <laughs> uh, maybe once. And what was it? It's, well, an, it's just that it? same like fizzy, water. almost water piss, mm-hmm. like slight tinge of lager taste. Yeah, yeah. Which is fine, but you know, there's yummier out there, without a doubt. So I'm just I'm not a drinker. Like I haven't drank in the last like two three months. Like if I want to drink, I just want to have cocktails. I just want to have like th- those type of drinks. And yeah, not, I not like spirits because you can have less. Yeah, uh, it's the yeah. it's the quantity of lager that for me that starts putting me off. Once mm. you've had like three four pints, it's just such mm-hmm. like it's just such quantity of liquid that you're just shoving inside your your poor tummy. Yeah, it's not comfortable. <laughs> Meanwhile, just a, a glass of whiskey and I'm like, oh yummy. Feeling a bit loose. Let's end on this one then from Warlock Wabbit, bringing it back to Mass Effect. After hearing the Mass Effect discussion, I have an important question. Who are your love interests, if any? And who are your main bros? 
Um, okay, so let's. Oh, this is so easy. You got you. You got Caden. You yeah. got Jake. No, you got no, <laughs> you, you got know. James Vega. Garris oh, is the James. <laughs> um, Garris is the bro. Yeah, Garris, Garris no, is the Garris guy. is. I love nothing. That voice, no one that would be look. as good as Garris. He is just a sweetheart. I love him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his whole story is awesome. He's got the yeah, he's just voice actor look. is incredible. Mm-hmm. His voice just the smoothness of that voice. Mm-hmm. Fuck, man. Lions. Yeah. Tarly's a white. He's the bro. I, I've got a soft spot for Grunt. I don't know why. Really? Do you know I what really I get? Like Do you know what I get? The gr- when I think of Grunt, I kind of get this. It's, it's like Argy, but like huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's voiced Argy. by the main guy from Cowboy Bebop, the like English version. Is he? Mm-hmm. The, the, that the, voice actor that's in everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. I, yeah, no, it's Grunt and G- Garrus as the the bros. They are the, um, the the modern. I like Legion. Modern. The Morden Solarian is, guy. He modern is modern top is a bro. Yeah, he's top two. It's honestly hard to say because all of them are good. Every character. No, this is what's so good about Mass Effect. Like, Not good. every character is good though. Jack Ashley sucks. Caden. No, but Ashley's interesting because she's like quite a hateable character. A space yeah. racist. Yeah, that's like interesting that that's in. There. Yeah, I think that's cool. Yeah, that they were willing to chuck shit like that in. Yeah, true. Morden, Morden's really good. Yeah, Morden's awesome. Um, um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Legion. Legion, um, yeah, Legion is great as well. Where Jack. do you stand on Liara? Liara is always my go-to love option. Yeah. There's no, uh, yeah. there's no. no Liara, other. Liara's incredible. Liara is the option to me. Their, their race is clearly the most interesting in a sex regard. I don't know, I, I, I'm thinking Tali. Tali is, she's a good one too. Um, way better than the other options in one. Well, you can't run she, that she, Yeah, she's not an option <clears throat> in one. Um, yeah, something about her. She's cool. Um... What are the characters? Do you like Rex? Rex, I like Rex. As I'm well. a fan of Rex, but Rex he's just not in it that much. Yeah, it's only one. It seems two. like a missed opportunity because it goes over to Grunt. Yeah, our yeah. boy Grunt. But he doesn't like come back in three, does he? He's Grunt does. No, Rex. He's not like a, a no, party he is. member. Rex. No, Rex is in three. Yeah, but a party the female Krogan. No, no, he's yeah. just in a mission. You see, that's one of the reasons Garrus and Tali are... You just get more time with them. Like, they're, they're with you the whole time. James Vega? Cortez? Where'd you stand it's on the Cortez? Humans, I just don't really give a shit about yeah. the yeah. universe that much. Honestly. All the aliens Yeah, there's nothing there to, like, for. learn about them. Well... Like, Gar... Gar- I say Garrus, but I don't think it's his name. Garrus. Mm-hmm. His whole arc is like he's a detective and he's just like, I want to get this mm-hmm. case. I need this. And he joins he's like your a squad. cop that's sick of the, like, the system. bureaucracy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the system. And then in Rassac 2, he's like a fucking... Yeah, that's the, why the he f- goes to Omega because there's no red tape. So he's like, I can just take down whoever I'm, I want. Yeah, and then he... It's, no, but it's just like, if you've played Mass Effect 1 and you go to 2 and it's just like, there's this fucking sniper, this fucking dude. And it's just like, it's this whole intro. It's just like... Ah! Yeah, they're trying it's to like, trick you. They like keep it a secret and shit. Oh my god! I, I you're making me want to play the game again. I can't do this, Alex. I can't. Thane as well, Thane is a bro. Oh, Thane's awesome. Oh, Thane's Thane. really cool. Again, a character I wish I had more time mm-hmm. like in the I, games with. He did, did he show up in three? Yeah, yeah. I would he say did Anderson because, is a bro yeah. as well. Anderson, yeah. He's kind of the bro. Oh, Keith David, yeah, absolute legend, amazing character. And even he, he's not a bro by any means, but the elusive man. He, yeah, he's like he's, the opposite. He's like an evil bro. <laughs> yeah, the opposite. What is the opposite? Um, <laughs> a sister. <laughs> <laughs> See, no thinking of this just shows the amount of incredible characters Mass Effect has. Like, I'm we're probably forgetting some proper proper good ones. Yeah, I'm just going off what I've played recently. So there's probably a bunch of stuff I can't remember yet. Yeah, Jack, I do like Jack actually. Mm. Um, I've still got to do a loyalty mission in my current playthrough, but Miranda, not that mad on Miranda. She's no, but right. obviously she's she's the obvious choice for some people. Obvious, yeah. I See, suppose, the, yeah. she's like so obvious that it's like boring. Yeah, almost. The, you're not interesting. Your surface level. You're all about that ass. There's nothing <laughs> else, you know. She got. Which I got to too. that scene where the 
because they like patched that shot. They did, the, yeah, yeah. Mass Effect Two, where it like shows her ass for like ages in that shot. I did that scene in the remake to, and so how was it? I know what the new angle is now. Um, is it zoomed in even I more? It's, fine. it's like <laughs> yeah. the same dialogue. It's just from like a different angle now. Is the angle good, or is it just like the it's window? Fine. <laughs> it's like not that memorable or whatever. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other characters. Hmm. Mass Effect has a lot. Le- uh, Legion. Yeah, you said Legion. She? Legion was always my fave. Yeah, he's cool. The Prothean in 3 is quite a bro. I can't remember his name. He's, yeah. a, bro. he's a bit of a dick, isn't he? No, the, the worst character in 2 is, race. is the, yeah. uh, the mercenary guy. Who you get in a DLC? Oh, yeah. Zaid. <coughs> yeah, Zaid. I never experienced him. <coughs> He's alright. I, I did his all team mission. Fan. Just l- the Shadow Broker and Liara, boom, incredible. Yeah, Liara is the answer. Liara is the answer. If, no, if, I'm voting Tali. Sorry, you're being it's two to, two to one, bro. Like, well, what was, is there's a there's a fucked up I'm bit in Mass Effect Two where like one of the Asari are like, yeah, if you wind up in like a. a like a wedlock with a human, you can just wait out because they only live like hundred yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Because they, because <laughs> the Asari live like hundreds of years. They live like a thousand years. Because so, like in Mass Effect One, uh, Liara is only like a hundred. Yeah, which she's, is like, like, she's, she's really, like young. really young. She's shown she's like, like yeah. a, a literal teenager. Yeah, exactly. Like. So, which is like such a cool idea. It's like sad, having races though. that are like, yeah, they all live different amounts yeah, yeah. of time, but they're able to like mingle and. No, but it's really sad. Like, imagine being in love with Liara and then she 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 will outlive you. She outlives you. you, yeah. And that's like that's fucking depressing. Yeah, it's like Lord of the Rings with the elves. And yeah, the yeah. Damn, that's drama. I'm gonna go home and just cry myself to sleep. <laughs> and I'll fuck. Why can you never romance a Krogan though? <sighs> they were saving it for Andromeda and they just dropped the ball. Yeah. <laughs> that beautiful Krogan in that game. <sighs> When's the Andromeda remaster coming out? Next week. Oh, the shadow dropping it on. <laughs> It's actually like a uh, an unlock in the legendary edition. <laughs> if you uh, get every achievement, I think that's that's the end, guys. I'm going to piss myself. And so are you, unless you give us money on Patreon. Thanks, everybody. We love you. We. Ow. That was a slap and a half, Jamie. Do it on my butt next time. <laughs> <laughs>